Hello everybody and welcome to some more Anne Bernard Dev Clash. Don't know why there we go. Now now you can see the map, the world, and everything in it. We're of course going to be observing once again. And as the players filter into this newly opened lobby, we uh, will get ready to go again. I'm of course joined once again by Father Loris. Yeah, who's currently trying to install a new version of the mod. Yeah. Um, uh, I got I got sent the link to it. I think they announced it yesterday. Um, no, the day... They didn't announce it in announcements. Very important. I don't know where it was announced, but I yeah, I sent you the link. It's, <laughs> everything's good now. Everything's... Everything's sorted now, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I will be on. And also, I have some new like i've got an information cheat sheet that i'll probably be uh making use of uh so i can uh kind of kind of let you guys know more about the various areas of the world that we're looking at and uh, maybe we'll get some interesting interviews with a couple of the devs in here as well that'd be nice yeah it's a really good cheat sheet too it's got like loads of stuff yeah the law, so we'll actually know about what's what's actually happening in Sahel. <laughs> exactly. A bit. <laughs> exactly. Um, specifically, one of the people I'm most interested in talking to is... Uh, where is it? Uh, Zerkanrek, um, who is playing... He's playing as... Ditto in... No, he's... The name is Ditto and he's playing Zerkanrek in South Alentia. Um, and specifically, I want to talk to him because he's the the lead of the um, the rework that's going on with the Forbidden Plains. And I want to know what's going on in the Forbidden Plains because yeah. in my multiplayers, uh, it's a wasteland of where hope goes to die and we... <laughs> generally want to snap the region because it's just bad for multiplayer so uh, there was an interesting thing i saw about the there's a new religion for the centaurs is that right i think there will be yeah is it in this build or is it i don't think it's in this build no right right um see that sounds interesting forbidden plains uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. It'll be talked about after the Sahal release, so it's it's not going to be out on the twentieth of November, like uh, this this Sahal update. It's going to be like the next thing, hopefully. Um, there's going to be like three new centaur formables, and a a, re a new uh, lake fed splinter mission tree, which apparently is already in. Um, potentially. But it would be very nice to see a little bit more stuff about the Forbidden Plains and maybe it can be more integrated with the rest of the world and be, you know, a fun thing to have in multiplayer. Yeah, rather than something appears and it's either going to kill you or yeah. not kill you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the people who got knocked out ne last week? I don't know. I assume yeah. they've gone and chosen new tags or... Something along those lines. I don't think anyone got save edits, but I I couldn't Some, tell you really. switched on to Ruby Company. Uh -huh. Oh, very nice. Uh, so yeah, and they've got they've got uh, Rail Skulker as their vassal. Excuse yeah. me. What is the player here? So maybe they oh, they moved away from it again. Oh, it's a bit, yeah. Ah, sadness. They can release Rail Skulker, play as the vassal, then you know. Then we get to see all clan. Yeah. Tree. I'm actually also going to turn your voice up a bit. Oh. That was asked of me last week. Well, they're going to regret it. Never. All right, talk. To, a, they have to listen to my voice. It's uh, grating at the best of times. I mean, two, you get used to I, it. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you get used to like syphilis or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm you are, you are tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can live with it. There's medication for it now. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, man, you used to do that No CB podcast, 
And yes. You go through like the sound files, and I would, I would talk very quietly and then laugh incredibly loudly that's so true like, you do have a very loud huge... laugh uh, yeah yeah exactly i've got a like, four that's what i've got <sighs> right let's have a look you get an nas 70 percent towards unpacking this thing which is taking a lot longer than are you, than you do you use seven zip i'm using the windows default oh windows default is slow as balls uh, it is yeah and every time i do this i go i should download yeah seven zip and then i don't I have a question in chat. Who is winning? My argument would be, we're all winning. Uh, but also Korintar. <laughs> Korintar has almost all of the city of Kastanath. They are the largest in the region. They're in a really, really good position. Uh, definitely, I think, uh, Karguin as, mm -hmm. as Korintar is just walking it. They're doing brilliantly. Yeah, I think uh, Kavoria is in trouble because their expansion path into uh, into there is going to be difficult. Yeah, for best. sure. Uh, Raven Banner does still exist, but for how long? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the OPM free vassal that uh, Kavoria gets. Yeah. Um, I also am digging the uh, Bursartanches player. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they did a lot of really nice uh, role play with the Asga Evren player. Which you love to see, um, and if they just go, you know, murder Erlium. We could potentially see a Bursar Ten Sheezen, uh Phoenix Empire, which is the best form of Phoenix Empire, clearly, mm. naturally. <laughs> wow, I still have not played in that region beyond playing as uh, oh. the Over Clan. Oh, that's sad. You really should. My yeah, favorite. It's literally my yeah, favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I've been told it's so good. By you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't lying. Um, Sariand also doing really well. As is Bianfeng. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of uh, lot of good players doing well. Uh, Alexia's playing as Rakaz. Um, be interesting to see what he managed to do uh, as well, because obviously he doesn't have a mission tree. He's now bordering Sariand, and I think there's also some going to be some more players to his south that are yet to join the lobby. We have got a disproportionate number of people who are playing nations without mission trees too, right? Certainly more than your average lobby for sure. But you know yeah. they want to show off a bit of Sarhol and makes sense. Oh well, we got a visual, which is. <laughs> which oh is, yeah, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> but, but who I think is the real power player here? Yeah. Clearly, this player needs to, like, sp spam like... out a Viz Waller mission tree and just sneak <laughs> into an update. Yeah, yeah. A dev cost reduction minus, like, 200%. Oh, yeah. Naturally. Uh... Uh, Ruby Company as well. Oh, sorry. Ruby Hold is, uh, is a player. It was. And they don't yeah, have a mission they... tree. Did they quit last time? Because like, they got their... Uh, they they slightly them. died, but I don't think they quit. Does anyone know if Alexius can become the Great Shahs? I assume that's how you pronounce it. Uh, is that system in this build? Uh, when we get into the game, I'll have a look. Uh, but I, right now, I do not know the answer to that. It's not in my cheat sheet. Yeah, no idea. Uh, that's a... All right, just got to do a bit of uh, file renaming, and I should be able to work. Hello there, Shushi. Who do you think is going to do well this session? Obviously, we've seen who did well last session, but are there going to be any standout people that you're uh, you're not expecting? Um, well, I think this session is going to be the uh, the session of the Serpent Spine Nations getting a bit more powerful. Um, I don't think there's going to be... Can't predict any huge explosions beyond Korintar doing pretty well yeah. um, in the next uh, 50 years. Um, I think for Korintar, it's going to be a case of just cleaning up the rest of Escan. Yeah, yeah, basically. I, I've got a feeling Korintar is actually going to get uh, unified before the Age of Absolutism. Probably. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Korintar is on Team Artists. So they're in a team with 
Sariand, of Dulcanzad, of Daltungur, Corin, uh, Corinta, obviously themselves, uh, Rakaz, so the uh, South Sahal guy, Tezilical, which I don't even know if that's being played. I've never heard of Tezilical. Uh, but it is, it oh, is being Oh, it's the, the big green one. They're the gnolls over there. They're all... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Mountain Shark and Garsvulshim. Which I think died. Because I don't see it on any of the, the search, so... Who knows where they were? <laughs> they were being played by Enleave. So is Enleave playing at the moment? Where is he playing? Uh, I don't see them. I don't see them. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a team that is very spread out. So we we'll have to see what. Uh, what wars and what alliances Corintar can make. Because I do know that a couple of the teams have actually, like, allied with themselves um, and allied other teams. So that might be a case of trying to get some sort of proximity alliances going. Because, like, the closest ally to Corintar is of Tungur. And mm. it's not exactly the closest. Of Daltunga don't have very powerful ideas either. Right? I mean, a lot of them are focused around focusing on their navy. Yeah, stuff. I really want to see an Of Daltunga mission tree. I would love to see an Of Daltunga mission. Yeah, we, I think we talked a little bit about it last week. Like, I'd love to see unique navy, um, yeah, naval units. Which are now For sure. Uh, like a, a massive steamship. Yeah. Long like, before the Age of Sail has ended. <laughs> really, really dumb dwarven ironclads. Yeah. Maximum of like five of them, but they or oh, they slap. Oh yeah. Take them yeah, down if really like good. if you got like a lot more ships, but I mean I suppose it's it's difficult to balance naval things though because uh, even the smallest advantage can lead to a just completely untouchable level of of dominance. So yeah. it's it's kind of hard to work around that. That's true. I mean, I mean, Eberfil is in kind of that place at the moment, right? I mean... They are. Yeah. Uh, I um, think I've got it launching. Is Corveria in that team? Can I just have a loading art for the new update? Oh. It's gorgeous. It's a really good job on it. What team is Corveria in? Ah, uh, it's a look at the old cheat sheet. I actually don't see them on any team. Uh, at least I'm, unless I'm like completely blind, then I actually don't see them on the team. They're their own. I'm sure we'll find out at some point. Isn't there? There might be a, a, a teams map mode that I don't think has ever been used uh, that we can look at, but we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. Um, is also the Raven Banner is actually on a team. They are being played by Angel Angelic Burrito. Great name. Um, although, are they here right now? They are. Yeah. So, you know, Raven Banner is on a team, but they're not on a team with Corvuria. So, we'll see. You know, that could be a bit awkward. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they get much of a choice. I mean, they sort of just get slapped by Corvuria, right? Yeah. Unless they're allied with someone. Corvuria like is the art team lead. Oh, is that why I can't see him? Because they're on a different... Right. Yeah, they... Okay, so Corinta and uh, Corvuria are on the same team. Okay. The the team leads are not in the teams on the sheet that we've got. But yeah, okay, that's perfect. We can see now where things are. Um, Who has the best military? Um... Oh, good question. I mean, it's got to be Ibovar. You can't really, can't really sniff away from Ibovar. Yeah. So. Um, Elven military. The the. I mean, as far as quality goes, right? It's, it's yeah. Not like Ibovar's got the perennial Elven problem of no men. If they can get around that, though, 
Uh, I mean, no country in Anbanar, I think this is still true, has the potential for as high a discipline as Ibava. Like, they've yeah. got the, the max potential for um, for discipline. But, oh yeah, of course, we've got Madala Khan, the elephant warriors in yeah. the Raj. Yeah, no, Ibavar, your old news. <laughs> Cav <laughs> combat ability is the uh, is the If you're is, really is the cheesy day. getting them with uh, centaurs, or them as uh, the, the, a Denico with centaurs too. Yeah. I don't want to play as a Denico at some point. Oh, I don't know if it's I don't know. I do it might be. Either. Riding people down for the lady. <laughs> 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 the only thing about a delicate is you have to have one specific. Oh, it's not what it's not what country. Some other fucker squats on it. Yeah. All the time. What race has the best military? Oh, a right. Uh, oh God, good question. Because obviously, elves have plus ten percent discipline, but they also get horrible manpower malice and a manpower recovery speed malice. So that kind of blows. Um, the tigers. That you get in like Rabagekur, they've got really good shock damage modifiers, so they could do really well. Um, harpies move faster, siege better. Um, what other options do we have? Let's just not even pretend that the Ruinborn are in in contention here. That they're just not. <laughs> <laughs> um, orcs could be up there with their shock damage. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're especially very good early game. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. You can't really say... Like, early game and late game, the answer is completely different. Because if you're talking about just the late game, gnomes. Yeah, you, gnomes easy. Yeah, yeah. Easily gnomes. Right, because yeah. you'll be able to get the um, just horrifically dangerous cannons. Uh, with They have the most pips on their units. They'll have... A lot of artificer units, so gnomes just just win. Yeah. Um. But for who is good throughout the game, I think I might have to give it to dwarves. Yeah, I think they're pretty good all rounders. Uh, they have a bit of a manpower problem, but I think not as bad as the elves, right? Definitely nowhere near as bad as the elves. Um. If yeah, you manage I to consolidate a decent cool. dwarven country, you're gonna be rich as hell as well. Yeah. Hobgoblins pretty good all around us too, I think. True, but nobody ever places them. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's just the command. That's yeah, it. it's just the yeah. command and like his little vassals. <laughs> uh, if there was there might be a mission tree somewhere like Lot to Kang or something around here. If if they had like somewhere in their missions where they switched to Hobgoblin military, that would be really cool. Yeah. yeah that would be I know there is a hobgoblin like exodus um, that happens in multiple different mission trees to go to around this area. Like Ketbete. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch that go there. The problem with the command is that uh, they're too powerful to play. <laughs> That's the problem, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like playing as um, a good vanilla. Equipment. Ming. Ming, yeah. I know, no, Ming, like, has a lot of challenge now, right? So does the command after not... they got their mission tree. Oh, do they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I just assumed like you play the command and you win. It's it's <laughs> it's assumed. not enough of a challenge to make it worth seeding them alongside like a Rajna Haga and a and a one Zia. Yeah. But I, I think that's the same as Ming. Like they are way more powerful than anyone in the region, oh, but they yeah. do have like, their stuff challenges. If you're playing uh, multiplayer, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't play as the Ming in single player even, right? I always play as, like, Manchu. Yeah, or, Manchu's uh, just a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Really. Uh, we, speaking of Manchus, if, uh, we should say Keterato's got a Manta system there, right? Yes. And the reason that they're blue in our current game is because at the start of the game, they're in a civil war against a country called Nirat. And, uh, yeah, Keterato lost their civil war this time. Um, and there's... Three uh, religions now for the Ketists. There's Nira Ketist, uh, Ah Ah Ketist, believe me, that's how it's pronounced, and then Ah, Eliketist. It's Ah Ketist, Um, and then Eliketist. 
and I think Eliketist is like the the original one. Okay. Um, if you're not ready, don't you should. We're all different breeds of cats. Yeah. And then we're gonna get going now as well, which I'm looking for. Cool. And now we can actually go in game and read the descriptions of these different <laughs> cats. <laughs> find out what it's actually about. Yeah, we gotta know. We gotta know. It's important. Yeah. Is Eliketist the new Wanderers as well? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, they're Eliketist. But there's also Eliketist down here. I think that's the, the bog standard uh, Keteratan religion. Oh, small fellows are doing okay, actually, on the old. When the they old unite their, all of their region, then we'll see exactly how. Um, how good of a position they're in, but until that happens, we yeah. can't really tell. Korta, although they've got um, Kasanov. Yes. You know, doesn't have all Kasanov and therefore can negotiate with the uh, tradition, so that, that land's completely useless. Well, it's only one province they're missing, and it is missing from an AI as well, so I can definitely uh, see that. Coming it'll, to Korintar it'll fall soon. Eventually, yeah. But then you have to get rid of all the devastation. So it'll be a while until this province is useful. I have a moment they cost money, I believe. Right? So it's fake me. I have a drink. I think I think the lobby has uh had some issues. And even <laughs> with Anne Bernard developers um, <laughs> Don't the, type in chat. <laughs> yeah. The the funny meme box myth is still persistent. <laughs> You love to see it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that is such an old myth. It comes yeah. from Victoria 2. Yeah. For like, for the longest time, yeah. But hey. I think it was in CK2. It was, it was back with the meta server. Like, that's how long. Well, I'll tell you what it isn't in. Any game after Imperator, because there is no text. <laughs> in game chat. That's why they removed the in-game chat in New Paradise oh, yeah. games. It's Causing too much desync. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh man! But I mean, considering <laughs> we got like fifty players, like the fact that it, it's it's we got in last week and had no issues was really special. Yeah, it just I couldn't mean, last. <laughs> it's it props to like EU four team because I, th I still think EU four is like a stable uh, paradox game. Like, I've heard good things time. about uh, Hearts of Iron, at least of their yes resyncing system. Yeah, Hearts I of want Iron that. Is very smooth. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I think E4 is is generally very good. Yeah, E4 or Hearts of Iron, you're right. Yeah. And you don't have to do the annoying no lobby problem, but stars. Oh, we are rehosting. It's like it. We are rehosting. All right. This here is something that Carguin made. He is the Corintar player. You got to love it. Dedication to the craft. Dedication to the craft. Uh, Alright, let's see. Is the lobby open? Yes, it is. Oh, we grab code. And I don't really need to hide it because you don't have the uh, thing anyway. The mod, so it's fine. You hate that you have eyes. <laughs> oh, that's just, that's just pure jealousy that I'm seeing. I'm gonna have to show it to Father Loris as well. He's not seen it yet. But get back in. Hopefully, it won't take too long. We are oh, I'm back. Welcome I'm back. 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 Uh, so like, is the game up? Uh, it is, yes. My um, my stream is uh, very unhappy right now because I just shared with them something that the Corintar player made. <laughs> I saw this. I saw this, actually. It's, uh, 
It's, <laughs> it's a work of art. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, amazing uh, clap. I hate that I have eyes. Nekocor is an abomination <laughs> before man and god. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, so conflicting opinions here, I would say. <laughs> it is art. I, I love it. It is. It is a work of art. Not all art is to everyone's taste, you know? <laughs> I just love the little, uh, the little notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I especially like when it's, um, the dude pans across to change it to Nekokorin. Yeah, it, it looks so like so. It looks like a face from Mountain Blade Warband. <laughs> it does. Who is he? I don't know. It? But it's very funny. Is he just just a unit model from maybe <laughs> from some obscure unit pack? Yeah, maybe. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. All right. Serve mode. Ready. Oh, cup of tea, and I tell you what, two slices, a little slice of Battenberg. Oh. oh, I am set. He is indeed. Oh. Do you get Battenberg over there? Or do you have to like, get uh, to a specialist I'd... Battenberg shop? I mean, you probably need to go to a specialist uh, to get it where I am. I... Not really my favourite, anyway. What? No, it's... What, what, is the, what is the thing in it? What's that flavour? Um, marzipan. I hate marzipan. Oh, really? Oh, you, you don't like Big Wells either, then, actually? Mm -mm, nope. Oh, man. Love a bit of I'd happily just eat that. I have bought, like you know, you get the rolls of marzipan for like a pound. I, well, not here, but <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I just, just, I'm just, I've literally bought baking marzipan. Just to eat Revolting, disgusting, Lovely. even. Mm. So Elf. Roll, roll it into little balls, and then you, you uh, but it doesn't feel as bad as you. Okay. <laughs> bites, bites full of marzipan. Hmm. All right. Uh, who do we oh, have? I mean, how many how many plays did we have when we started before? Uh, Fifty. Oh, like what well, this session? I'm not sure. Yeah. It was over fifty, and I'm out. Yeah, I mean we got fifty-one now, so we have to wait and see how many we are right before we kick. Hey. Hmm. Or I could go in and count all the different chats, but only one of them has uh, a player limit in the chat, so you can't really tell. That's all right. What does Amanda need to do now? Now she's got the old Yinnick. Yinnick um, well, there's one province that she doesn't have yet. Oh no, three provinces, one country. Maybe it's something to do with that? And then, what, the annex is all her little, little spearlings? I would hope so. <laughs> stay as a vassal. If they stay as a vassal swarm, <laughs> it's uh, gonna be a little bit cold. <laughs> Have we got anyone colonizing yet? Mm. No, because the first idea sets have just come in. Yeah. That's right. Pearl's Edge did go colonial ideas, but it's hard. They haven't got there yet. Yeah. And we don't have a Vanail. Uh, we could see Viacock, uh either colonizing themselves or waiting until they can um, escape to the New World as Mix and then just troll everybody uh, by being a Knoll pirate in um, the, the New World, <laughs> which I actually Viacock love. It's in the Moon Isle of Luxembourg and Watchman's Point. Look at that. And uh, Pearl's is actually in the Bump. So you're right, yeah, yeah. These are weird wacky borders around the mouth of uh, Dame's neck, I should say. That, wait, you Ma said Viacog? Oh, wow, Viacog is yeah, in, in Moon Isle. Oh, yeah. I did not see that. Yeah, you must have completely missed out last time. And Adrael. The, uh, the Magisterium Island centre. Oh, so you're right. Okay, so maybe they will stay as Viacock? But maybe um, they'll go pirates still, because they oh seem God. to be getting islands and stuff. That island, if you can pirate raid, that island is disgusting. That's Look amazing. at how many provinces you can take um, mm. money from. Oh my God, that's that's vile. <laughs> Actually vile. I love it. Yeah, I, think, I think they might be, might be going for the pirates. 
Yeah. Tim said pirate. Uh, are there any cobalt players? Yes, we have uh, red scales. Uh, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the, the dark scales were murdered by, I believe, the Azra expedition. Good occur. So any hate can be directed his way. Also, the red scales were kind of murdered too, but it well, yeah, pretty badly. I, I, I feel like them attacking Nimskod was actually more suicide than being killed. <laughs> did they attack Nimskod? I yeah, was, they did. Uh, While they were at war oh, with Gawed, Gawed they attacked Nimskod. Right. Yeah, yeah, because they went for the island. So then yes, didn't. and failed. Yeah, I but yeah, they're coming back. They're at war with them right now, so maybe they'll be able to uh, turn it around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got some other gnomes who will probably want the land from Nimskod, I think. Yes, Port Nam. Port Nam. I wonder, can Port Nam form the gnomish hierarchy? Yeah, I think certainly something to check for a game game, right? Yeah. If they can, then they get, obviously, they yeah, get a mission tree. tree. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. No one gets a mission tree, but if you manage to form something... Then you can have it. <laughs> all players, all players must play nations with no mission trees, and everyone's desperately grasping for content. Yeah. But yeah, with um, with Viacock, they actually have Watchman's Point as well. They have them land um, on the edge of the Empire. I don't know who's given them this, but yeah, they can. You can raid three sea tiles, so literally all of. Dame C, and uh, there is a there is a privateering map mode. Maybe we'll be able to see it then. Is it actually called uh, Viacog? <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? I mean, I can't think would... of another way. Of doing it. I can't think of any other way to pronounce <laughs> yeah. this. It's just gonna make me giggle every time. It's it's like you know the little cave system in the uh, near rail stalker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Gotta get gotta get Big, that where is it? Massive shaft. Massive shaft. Where are we? There we go. Massive shaft owned by the Mithril Arm Cartel. Yeah, south of it. Yeah. Big Nick. Big Nick. Massive <laughs> yeah. shaft. North of it, old hole. Old hole, yeah. <laughs> and the kinky MIG outlet. <laughs> it's uh, uh someone had fun. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. It's a uh good gaming scheme. A bit, a bit north of Ernatvir, we've got the shaft of Bagui. <laughs> oh, Mayamo's still alive. Mayamo's actually doing way better yeah. than I've ever seen them do. Yeah, same. I don't know why they haven't been murdered yet. Man. Do they have, like, full-blown content, or are they just I... Smash Mouth memes? Oh, still? I think it is just Smash Mouth memes. Yeah, but does if Smash Mouth memes have a mission tree? <laughs> That's the question. I think so. Really? I, oh, I think so, yeah, but I think it is Smash Mouth memes. In, good, 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 in good, good, good. Uh, uh, which, I mean, you know, having a meme tag isn't a bad thing. No, no, it's, I, 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 I like it. It's fine. It's important to have uh, comedy in, in a fancy setting. The Mithril Arm is working the massive shaft. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> not wrong. Like every every good fantasy setting has comedy. Nice. Right. So now I can't even cut that out of the video because we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube's gonna have fun with that. Oh yeah. So hopefully we have no issues this time. No one is typing in the funny box. Everything is looking good. I think it was 54 players or 53 players. Hmm. Which is like probably the biggest I've ever taken part in. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been in a big one. Oh. Yeah, it's normally around like 30 odd, right? It's normally there. Who do we want to check first? Do we want to check the Myanmar mission tree? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> The best of the mission trees. Yeah. It's a yeah. shame it's not being played by anyone. <laughs> that, that would be very nice. Yeah. I think the only ones that are in that region is uh, Azra Expedition. Um, yeah, well, there they, they was a Marblehead. Tragically died. 
Tragic. Big tragic. It was the silly war that we did, though. Yeah. Uh, like there was Ruby, obviously yeah. the Ruby Company as well, or the the or the Goblin that was there. Yeah, yeah. Myrmore Mission oh, Tree. Oh, got somebody on Doom and Blue Shield. Oh yes, there is. Yeah. Interesting. Um, get out of my swamp. We've got uh, Shraktar. Yeah, it's, it's it's small, but it is there. It is a mission tree. Hey, thank you very much for the prime necrophilius. Appreciate it. Uh, it's so, yeah. ideas, isn't it? Where it's like, um... yeah, it's, their ideas is definitely where all of the thing is. Our swamp, Wait, is the it? fern munchers. All right, there's there's a lot of text yeah, here. They. I can't see the Smash Mouth references. So they get rid of Have it. Have they changed it? Oh, I hope they haven't. Wait, our swamp obviously is. Shrek reference, but hmm, maybe it got what? changed. We'll have to download a very old version of uh, oh, Amber Natal. Why did they change that? I I can't deny, can't confirm or deny if they actually have. So uh, we'll leave them be for now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna whinge and whine. <laughs> Naturally, of course. Not, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, All right. I want to check good. on Viacock. Because I think there is a pirate map mode that I wanted to see. Piracy. Yeah, uh, and they have been. Uh, there is the ability to raid all in Vertesk, all around the Dame's Head, uh, oh, all the way to Nathalair, of Doltunger, Elisna. Um, all of this red stuff has been raided recently. Or all. Oh, my God. He's... That's so good. That's so good. He's making fat stacks. That's really impressive. I mean, now the the trick would be to go up and take uh, the island from Nimscod. Take Nimscod itself and get more raiding opportunities up the coast there. Yeah. Oh shit! They can they can actually raise provinces. I didn't know that. Nor did I. Yeah, plus 20% morale of navies this early in the game. You, okay, you've won all of the naval conflicts. Good job. Yeah, and they haven't even got national ideas. So as soon as they get maritime ideas. Yeah. Uh, what's the ideas? Oh, okay. Hey, hey. Hello there. Would you be interested in interviewing Thorfindel? Uh, Hell yeah. Little... Yeah, yeah. Love, love me a Thorfindel. Is he all right if I drag him in right now? Yeah, for sure. Fine by us, yeah, yeah. Orphandal was very helpful helping us uh, get earlier versions of my Anbanar uh, version submod yeah. uh, up and online. So, hello oh, there, sure. Orphandal. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Not yeah, too good. bad. So, we haven't spoken in a while. Yeah, it has been. It has been some time. Mm. Uh, who are you playing in this uh, game? So that's that's the great ironic thing of me being here. I'm not playing anyone. That's okay. That's a great start. <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, well, I've, I'm streaming my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, what is it that you work on in Anbanar? Probably then the better question. Yes. Uh, I can't see your screen. I'm, afa I'm afraid. I'm doing this by, from mobile. Ah. So just as a heads up. Fair enough. I, uh, I work on... Well, two and a half things, I would say. I'm in charge of the systems, so as soon as it becomes more than one tag kind of content, uh -huh. I uh, I make sure to to stick to a certain vision that me, but not just me, have developed. Right. And I'm in charge of balance overall, and in charge of the Hales continent. But in each of those cases, I nowadays more more often than not have a a, a co lead. Or someone I, I do this together with. Okay. For instance, in Hales, you'll find the Elephant Lords, played by Elefante. In the last month, he's become my co-lead. And uh, that in practice means he's taken charge of the pra practical and management side of Hales development. Right. So, and, yeah. so you are the balance lead and in charge of things in Hales. Yes. And 
Could you explain the Elephant Lords then to me? And how that happens? <laughs> so strictly I, I speaking, like... that's actually outside of my jurisdiction. Okay. Because <laughs> that's, that, that's Ryan. But I, I, I was involved when they were getting made. Rahan, so I'm, I'm talking supercontinents here. Rahan is part of uh, Hellas. Yes, and, and throws the Forbidden Plains. For, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, there we go. <laughs> that, you're not you're not making it easier. Um, okay. In that case, if Rahan is technically separate from you, uh, can you explain Bai Hon Jing? Bai Hon Jing. Also, yeah, they, they could be yes. fairly imbalanced, but not not too bad, I guess. Yeah, so Bai Hong is person like that's the f generally that's Hong Sai, right? Yes. Uh, because technically speaking, someone else could form them, but nowadays, due to the lack of MTs, it's Hong Sai. Yeah. Hong Sai is a, um, a one of our rare time trial MTs um, made by Tators. Right. Uh, playing Coveria, and uh, if I if I remember correctly, anyway, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. if you yes. if you are good at the right. game. Yeah, if you're good at if you are able to keep your ghost emperor with enough energy, uh, fast enough, you get all the goodies. And if yes. you are not unable to, you don't lose the game. You just get less goodies. So it's a, it's not necessarily a punishing MT, but it's a rewarding one if I, you're faster. I did play with some friends, um, and my friend played it. It's very prone to uh, getting very frustrated at minor inconveniences. So it was a very rough game to try carrying on because that ghost is uh very hungry right for energy yeah. <laughs> quite a lot yeah. yeah so so we tried to aim like we we decided to in terms of balance and and difficulty mm -hmm. to give it a higher challenge so those who are better at the game it's it's a bit of a exponential snowball right so if you're better at the game you'll actually be able to complete the challenges yeah. and thereby become better at the game so that yeah. that's maybe a negative aspect no, but, it's fine. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a classic good design of risk reward, right? Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's I guess, uh, and, and yeah, yeah. Which and just yeah. to circle back a little bit, because I know why you spoke about the elephant lords. Just to make it abundantly clear, they are on the slated for balancing rework. Okay, that just good hasn't to happened know. yet. Yeah, it's good to know. Um, we have it's, a player war in Hellas right now. Actually, we do. In, in, it includes Bai Hun Jing, funnily enough. Although, uh, Bai Hunjing are AI and also currently losing very, so very hard. Bayern, is that Wagon Zoo doing a war as Bayern Fang? Yes, mm -hmm. with, uh, he's allied himself to Verkal Ozovar. And, and I imagine very, very well. this is... <laughs> it's a steamroll, actually, I think. Yeah. I mean, those are teammates, like, yes. aren't they? Like, pre-defined pre teammates? Uh, we've got... Gensu on... Hang on, I'm looking at my, my cheat sheet here. Honsai was actually supposed to be played, but it isn't. Um, yeah, Wagensu playing Biang Fang and Ockman playing Verkal Azovar are both on team writers. Um, so, give us yes. a little bit of uh, lore about Biang Fang, because they're one of a few kingdoms in, um, in Fancy China. So, I would say <laughs> Biang Fang is. Um, more of their more, more classical example of a warlord with big ambitions right and they and amb they are ambitious for the dragon throne and um, Me too. it's all about uh winning the warlords like winning the the yan the yanshan region yeah and uh grabbing everything so in that sense it's more of a vanilla mt but at some point, there is a, a scale where how benev benevolent or tyrannical you act can do a bit of a sliding thing, right? And uh, depending on how you act, is is this different modifiers get given or not given to you? Because uh, Genshin's got like a tradition of republicanism, right? In the uh, in the law, is that right? And there's never been That's like true. a United yeah. Kingdom. Uh, no, we don't like the British in Yangshin whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Try to stick, keep them away. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. No, 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 it, it's it's true. So at some point in um, between 100 and, and 200 um, AA, as they call it in, in Embenar, mm -hmm. uh, Haramar set up the eunuch system. 
Eunuch, however you pronounce it in English. Yeah, 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 that's fine, yeah. yeah that's good. And uh, there are they they've effectively become the ar aristocracy, and that is a yeah. Is it a, a Republican? It's definitely not democratic, but it's definitely Republican in the sense that they tried to sound Republican because you yeah. can't have kids. But depending right, on right. which country we look at, that has or hasn't really worked out. Is uh, is it root and stem? It's very important. This uh, you know. Or is it the Ottomans to be to get the whole whole shebang with the eunuchs? I'm I'm afraid I didn't quite understand your question. Is it root? <laughs> like he's asking what kind of castration goes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... Uh, very important. Very important. Because, hey, oh, like, root and like... stem. Yeah, That's what yeah. you're saying. Like, are important. you talking about a Rahaini country or something? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, this, I'm this, not this going to answer China, this question. This is why China in real life survived, but the Ottomans didn't, right? Because, you know, the Chinese, they went full hog, got root and stem, you know, the Ottomans just, just went for the stem, and that's why the these, these are not the questions I expected to be asking <laughs> in <laughs> <It's> very, a... <laughs> very important law questions, yeah. Naturally. Uh, so speaking of, like, Halles, obviously, you said you are the, the balance lead and the system lead, then, for Halles. Um... It's... No, for the for the whole mod. For the whole so mod, I have three right. hats. Yes, and of many yeah. talents. Uh, there are a lot of mission trees in um, Hales that basically ask you to conquer all of Hales. Is that um, something that will continue to be the case? Because it seems like very few mission trees uh, countries can actually like coexist with one another because of that. So, the the answer is a bit nuanced in the sense that a bunch of these mission trees happened before we properly restructured our development process, before okay. I even became a lead. Because we're talking, most of the mission trees you might be thinking of were actually made in the period before Warlords of Halles update. And it was, it was just dev hell at that point. Um, and that's why I actually became lead because I jumped into that gap to try and structure it. Right. Mm -hmm. But to also save my own sanity, there were limits to how pragmatic I, you know, I acted. Yes. Uh, so there was definitely this sense of, all right, conquer Yanshan, conquer the rest, conquer everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's good to note that there are exceptions, you know, Phaiton or Bike uh, Du Gang. Yes. Or yeah. even, even uh, Jiang Du. I would say is an exception because it only cares about the five or seven cities of the Yanhe River, and yes. then makes super genitals. So, oh, I've there seen are exceptions. Them. Yeah, I, I saw your stream, like your video, just this morning about yeah, like, the six, I uploaded the seven, a video seven, just today. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was dumb. So um, beautiful. <laughs> I I actually know of this reputation, and it's it's definitely true. But it's also not as black and, uh, and white as Reddit likes to make it sound. Because mm. you also have the dwarves, right? They only conquer two provinces and they have a whole bunch of vassals. And yeah. we've, we've really tried to lean into this abnormal, like how can we make vassals a successful thing? Yeah. And yeah. I think it really worked out quite well for them. I think uh, so, the yeah. ghost emperor is a time trial within his own region and then doesn't give a, give a shit about the rest. So that's up to you. So there is nuance to this. Right. But yeah. you're definitely right. There are some very big prominent names which want to conquer the whole world that's also true which is fine i i, I think that's the majority of people who are playing e4 are looking for you know that sort of content anyway and then there's, there's the other bits that want to have you know yeah and, to, and in the in the it's a, nearly a year i think at this point or more than a year at this point that i've yeah. i've taken over for the region and the vision and philosophy has, has changed to we want more variation in gameplay yeah mm -hmm. and i think a good example is is personally i think is uh the the fox nation the ya uh, yin kwan nation which is near that lake there on the yanhe river i think mm -hmm. is they the one and that died they are dead yes yeah in your in the mp yeah they 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 have a, a particular start that if it doesn't work out you're quite doomed because bind fang will eat you yeah uh, but they they do conquer around them, right? I mean, that's that's just basic gameplay. So that yeah. that's definitely there. But so then they focus on on this spirit thing, and we're currently developing our super disaster, the rending, 
aka Spirit died in the past. I which have heard things about that. The... Yeah, and we have some of our best designers on it, so it it should turn out to be an interesting thing as opposed to just pain. Yeah, like we, we know our we know our reputation about disa disasters. <laughs> um, I quite I quite like those though, like said, some of my overcoming those horrible bits. It's like, for example, you know, the, the Chocobo Manchurians to the north. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nugan Sarai. Nugan yeah. Uh, Nugan Sarai, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bear disaster is uh, rough as all hell, but it's fun to overcome it. Um, I will say. So, so to keep it to keep it a little short, uh, the summary of the the Fox Nation is that they are Fox spirits, which are actually a split up Great Spirit, the Great Spot, the Great Fox Spirit. They try to un to gather information and then put her back together, uh -huh. and then they unleash Spirit Hell all over Hales. And in terms of gameplay, that means that every spirit region, and there are 16 in Hales, mm -hmm. gives you five like quest lines. So that is the rending disaster. You get five quest lines, and if you complete them, you get big boons. Uh, but it's like riding a wave. So once again, if you're good and if you're able to ride the wave, you get better and better. You become overpowered and it's ridiculous. But if you can't ride the wave, then you fizzle out and just go back to normal. Are and that has regions... things to do with these temples, the temple complex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. So it's not in game right now, so you can't really see, but at some point there'll be decisions which will highlight uh, which region belonged to which great spirit. Yeah. And then these temples are the ones that are actually the, like, they're like the prison guards trying to s make these spirits stay away. And you want to ruin those temples and make sure that you can get out with your spirit armies. Ah, uh, yeah. So. Since since uh, since we are like the sort of guards, is, is it going to be a huge, a bit more of a disadvantage to plundering the temples now with the crotchy drills? Yeah, yeah. So I I think even I think the first iteration we will probably not quite get there. Hmm. I think it'll still you'll still want to plunder because it's just ridiculously, you know, profitable. Okay, Artificial, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the fact that you've, you're plundering should unleash this mega disaster, which is meant to be painful at least for 20 years. It's a risk reward. I think I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. I like, uh, so, I don't know, it, it feels like plundering at the moment has no consequence. So now it, 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 it currently consequence. doesn't. It currently yeah, doesn't. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and repairing is expensive and gives nothing back. So we're also looking at making, exp one of our ideas is to make repairing temples to link that explicitly to the high philosophy because it's a weaker religion. Right. And to make it act like holy orders do on a more of a dynamic scale. Yeah. So if you have a nice repaired temple, it might be a like a localized bonus to your country on in that region. I like the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's something that I've been hearing about for quite some time. Because um, I know when I played as Azkare, I cracked up at every single temple I could find. Because you get, uh, is it's Precursor Relics. Precursor um, Relics. From yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. And yes. uh, that's quite nice when you're looking at the Age of Artificery and, and trying to get the best armies that you can. But if there is, exactly. uh, if there becomes a benefit to leaving these temples in place, that would be very interesting to see. Yeah, so my expectation is that High Philosophy will like them to keep them in place, and the rest of the world will try to plunder them and then get hurt by the rending disaster. I like it. That's and then great. we have a bit of a balance there. Great yes. balance. Speaking of Precursor Relics, is there any in Sarhol uh, that will pop up? Um, because I saw um, the resources. That's a good question. I know that Sarhol's, Sarhol is add, adding some Dame Steer. Deposits like permanent ones, maybe one or two. Uh, I don't think they're going to get precursor relics in 1444, but don't pin me on that. Oh, yeah, lucky. Is that that's that famous one with the comet site permanent dome star, right? Which was an angel tag, but it's no longer that one. Yeah, that see, that that that's my my uh, my fault. I, I guess you could say I, I had it removed. Yeah. Oh, so we couldn't, we couldn't. We couldn't get the, the the gameplay figured out. I will find the tree messy. with which to lynch you from, uh, in imminently. <laughs> I, <laughs> the idea of an angel leading your country, I'm personally all for it. So <laughs> wait, wait, I'm going to interrupt you there because the angel tag was the problem. 
the existence uh-huh. of an angel ruler was not. And we're actually looking at whether we can have an angel lead your country. Yeah. Um, yeah. Found, we're thinking about having a, 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 yeah. Yeah. a super, maybe like what I had in mind, but I, I haven't seen the latest designs yet is a ruler who will jump in and help your tag. No, a general, I'm so, sorry. And then if you make your promises, you know, if you do your stuff well enough, then the, the general becomes your ruler and then you have this really cool angel ruler. In, in the lore, is there sort of like a heaven and hell uh, dualism in a sort of Abrahamic sense in in Ambana? Like is there like a, so now, a now you... angels and demons and stuff? <laughs> So I just realized something. I think I've been lying. I just realized that maybe the latest decision has been to remove the angel. So I apologize. Also, don't find okay. the tree, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, it's it's been it's been a journey. We're talking six months of discussions, yeah. also behind closed doors, trying to figure this out. Yeah. And the whole question about this duality as well. That that's one of the challenges. What we what we have in Amnar for sure is the celestial planes, and we also have the the, the inverse of it. I don't know, we know what they're what we're calling them to be honest. And there are celestial beings, and angels are part of those. Yeah. But it's more uh, akin to how D and D does it than the Abrahamic versions. Got you. So the more interesting version. Got love it. <laughs> <laughs> I I do I do very much enjoy how D and D does. Uh, it's it's heaven and hell. Um, Especially since uh, I, I recently went to hell in Baldur's Gate uh, 3. So I'm very, very much enjoying all of that kind of um, methodology yeah. behind it. So I'm glad to see that Anbana is going that route. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's good to have, like, uh, as long as it's like there's an evil and there's a good one. You yeah. Know, I think so that, what, what is a, what's an interesting challenge for, for me and my team? is to merge this D and D background, which we explicitly embrace. Yeah. But I've also, I personally really, uh, appreciate the Eastern mythologies. Yeah. So I try to actually include them a lot more in Hales, and that sometimes uh, causes some conflict because there's the, you know, the Western D and D worldview, I, I guess, versus the Asian uh, mythologies, which also are very different, right? It's not one, yeah. one country. Asia is not a country, and it, it's huge, and there are many different nuances to stories. Well, so I, I, I'm yeah. inclined to agree with you because I think one of the, the joys of uh, Ambana is it's not one uh, homogenous set set from one uh, fantasy, right? I mean, there's inspiration from loads of different fantasy sources, not just D and D, right? Yeah, is, yeah, uh, and we we argue every day about yet another, you know paradox which we've somehow made a reality <laughs> which like, is fine I, 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 had, I had a three week discussion about okay so we have spirits and we have souls Are do souls die or not are they reincarnated yes or no and then what happens if you're a spirit in in Canor what if you're a ghost is that a spirit and this took ages I mean... and I'm not sure we even we even resolved it we, we deliberately eventually we said we're going to keep it vague and we all left the room is... happy <laughs> Which is good. Yeah, yeah. No, that is that is what you want, right? Because as soon as you start drilling down Cimmerillion style into a into a setting, you know, the, it's the lay pain person, and it's yeah, yeah. It's, the lay person is going to turn up, right? I mean, like it's it, people don't care. Well, there <laughs> are explicitly ghosts in Canor, though, because you have the adventurers wanted events, where there is like a haunted yeah. mansion or some such. <laughs> so no, I know I I I, I once had a problem playing as uh, Ambincost, so it's like playing as basically a winter place, like a one pronged miner for ages to see, see how I could do it. And uh, a haunted house appeared, and that causes a lot of devastation. It does. A hell of a lot of devastation, and I was getting completely wrecked by a haunted house. <laughs> I, I basically got killed by a, by a spooky house in, in Ambincost. <laughs> that, that totally makes sense. <laughs> It was good. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It's a shame they so don't what, pop what, up on the trade map mode, so you can see them easier. But yeah, I we we've 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 figured it out. What happens to the is it the dead? Whatever the dead want at the time, whether yeah. they become a ghost or a spirit. Well, think of all the fantasy settings that do keep it vague like that. Like, like Warhammer keeps it explicitly vague. 
Um, what happens to what happens to an orc when it dies? What happens to a, a human when it's or a dwarf? It's not particularly consistent, and that's fine. Um, I think everything so I, is I have, true. I have five more minutes. I'm afraid. No, that's any fine. any no. more big questions you want to ask? Um, big questions um, about balance in general. I think would be like, yeah, what, what are we yeah. looking at with the balance of. Uh, the the new South South Hall content. Um, are you happy with how that's coming across? So I'll, I'll do the first part. Balance balance in general. It's good to know that in the last half year, maybe just a bit over a half year, I've been working in to, to doubling the balance team. So we have eight members in the balance team, and you know the average amount of hours is, is multiple thousands. And I think we even, we might have someone nearing 10,000 hours. And uh, the, the, I've shifted away from the, the, you know, what's the English word? Autocratic or authority based or tyrannical version of balance where one person says it all. Right. Yeah. That is definitely no longer the case, even though I, I have the final say if necessary. Yeah. yeah. And we've, Yes, uh, there's a lot of room for discussion, and we work towards um, uh, what's the, what's the, uh, like baseline values and policy. What we think, uh, formalizing policy on, on different aspects, like religions. We have a, a a power budget for religions nowadays. Right. So nowadays, I feel our balance is a lot healthier than it was, but we also are not reworking our whole mod, meaning. The classical OP examples are most likely still there because we, we fix what we can, but we also have proper human lives and we, we touch grass every so often. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that, that's, but I think, I feel this is a, a good platform to say that, um, balance and Amnor has never been better. I feel because yeah. it's a very democratic process from people. I feel no numbers. And of course I have a vision. I have a, policy and it's quite conservative so new stuff is generally weaker than old stuff if you had to make a comparison right and sarhal because it's run by among others like nowadays it's run by um oriris the dwarven uh, lead he's now also sarhal lead uh -huh. okay. and we we discuss all the time and he he pretty much has a, a hotline to the balance team every so often, like every day or every two days, he pops into our channel and says, guys, I have another thing for you guys to, to, to look at. And we've we've given everything at Sarhal priority. So from from province development to trade node sizes to religions, it's all gotten the extra attention from the balance team. So to answer your question, I feel Sarhal will end up being a great first you know, balance round. First pass. Okay. First pass is pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you... A question I've got from chat. How could you tolerate examples of a power budget being larger for some tags than for others? That's a good question. So this is a, a very much a pull and push dynamic between the regions saying this tag in lore is important to us. And then the balance team saying, all right, that may, that means we, we scale it within this tier level. Right. Yeah. And for national ideas, that's really easy for us. We have a, 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 behind the screens, we have a calculator, we shove in modifiers and it says it's an S tier tag. And whether you agree or not, that's a big discussion, but we have our tier list and we use that for quick and dirty scans. Um, but then for mission trees, of course, that's a lot more difficult. Uh, the bigger the mission tree, most likely, the more modifiers you get. It's it's a fact, you know, sizes. It just grows and grows. And people like permanent modifiers nowadays. You'll see that in mission trees a lot more now. Yeah. So there is definitely, you know, bigger tags, get more goodies, get better. Yeah. And we, we tolerate it in the sense that we have this whole process of review, which starts at the, at the themes of a tag saying, how important is this tag? And then it gets a, a budget for MT size, and that gives it a a kind of balanced budget. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily larger, but it, it will end up having more modifiers, which you know, generally means it's better, I guess. 
I think other yeah, another balance related really questions. One of the things were added a few uh, few updates a few four ago, of course, was the um, the uh, wonders the yeah. system. Um, yeah, which yeah, has yeah. Been a, it's been a great project, which is which is famous for being a nightmare for balance in <laughs> in in vanilla. Um, yeah. When adding wonders or planning to add wonders, how, how do you work yeah. around that? So I've, this is one of the, well, I wouldn't say rare cases, but one of the fewer cases where I have personally used my position as a balance lead to say, this is how we're going to do it. And you guys don't get to argue with me. Mm-hmm. And I've said that I really dislike global modifiers for monuments. Right. For balance reasons. Yeah. And I, I know agree. people, like some people like the Pokemon got to catch them all aspect of it which is a very nice single player aspect and it's great. Um, I'm afraid that's not my vision. And what we've done is we've set up guidelines for how um, like rigid or how, what's, yeah, how much of a, a scope a monument can cover. Usually it's regional or religion or it's your capital must be on this continent. And then most modifiers get shoved into, and I'm very happy about this part, into the regional slot for monuments, yeah. which is new. It wasn't there for ages. I really missed it. But now I'm really happy about it because then it means that either it gives a global modifier, but then you're limited by requirements. Like it must be high philosophy to get more manpower. Yeah. Or it's available for everybody, but it only helps that particular region. That's a nice way of looking yeah. at it. So, yeah. Yeah, and then we have like we have like three or four other other requirements. Like one of them is we don't really want more than three, uh, one monument, two monuments per region. I, I believe from the top of my head. So if you scan regions, you'll see that should be kind of the spread. And then there's a bunch of other things we look at. But generally speaking, you either get all the monuments and they're all localized, or you get very few monuments and then you have very few global modifiers. I would say um, it's mostly true, uh, looking around the map, uh, how many onions per, per region there are. But then I look at the yin. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so the yin was, a, was a particular project. I've actually, so the yin, I, whether, like, whether my math failed, okay, we can discuss that, right? But the yin was taken as a grouping. So we, we, we looked at the monuments as a set, because I think it's like four of them, right? Or five? Uh, so you're talking about the dams, right? The dams of the yin? Uh, yes, the dams and keeps and dames and... Yeah, there's a lot of lot of them are, I guess the dams are all one thing. Yeah, so those were done in one set in terms of balancing. Right. And I, there's also... Yeah, I didn't mention this yet, but the return on investment for a monument should be approximately 50 to 100 years in my... Like when I try to balance it. So if you do it straight for money, that's the kind of money you can get back from it. Right. If you do it in terms of manpower, it's a lot more difficult, of course, but we try. Right. Yeah. Uh, can also... Bulwa have some monuments, just out of curiosity, just eventually? Be nice. Yeah. My I favorite believe... region. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it is... It's a tough one because some of the more monument-hating people are on the Bulwa team. So it it doesn't really happen much, I guess. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean it's I don't know. I think they add a certain amount of flavor just having them, and and I think the compromise of not having global modifiers much is it, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, I have a, a question here as well from chat. Uh, do you have um opinions on dev bloat or force limit bloat? Both of them get uh, very insane very early into the mod across the board. I'm sorry about the noise for the kids. Don't worry about it. <laughs> My kids are on national television. Oh no, wait. Anyway, uh, <laughs> dev, dev bloat. Yeah. Uh, I don't really understand the question all that well, I'm afraid. Uh, are we talking just... about the ability to really stack it and by deving? Because we have dev yes. cost modifiers everywhere. Yes. I think it is about the dev cost modifiers. Yeah, so... This is a bit more difficult in the sense that newer stuff shouldn't really have this issue as much because we've really cracked down on, well, in particular, the dev cost one. That's 
new 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 MTs don't really get that much of that stuff. Old right. MTs still have it. The national ideas, no, the the group ideas, like the regular vanilla ideas, have of course also changed. So you don't have that stuff anymore. Yeah. But then, and this is my, I have a, yeah, one of my great grievances with Paradox is when they added infrastructure ideas and added Merck ideas. And yeah. we haven't gotten around to doing a full revamp of our Merck system to accommodate for that. Because it's, it's yeah. just messed us up in so many ways. I was going to say, I mean, like, uh, halflings have, have subsequently yeah. a massive bust, I, right? So we, we had just done the whole, we had just redone the whole racial mill, like of pretty much all tags yeah. for all races. And then they dropped the new idea group and we're like, all right, halflings win. First hundred years, <laughs> halflings rule. And after that, it's a snowball. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> and I was uh, this close to just banning the idea group within the mod. So, you know, you couldn't even use these new ideas. But then we decided vanilla still rules. And then we kept them. Speaking of halflings, uh, North Viswall is turned into DPEG. So I guess they're using their... They didn't go Merc ideas, actually. We went trade ideas first. I mean, so if we do you're one more question and then I'll head off, and then you guys yes. can start uh, casting. Right. Um, what question do we have from chat? Um, is Jay Bean a halfling? Yeah, I mean that's that's an easy answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures of Jay Bean. He's probably a halfling <laughs> for sure. Um, I give a softball question then, I guess. Um, what's your favorite nation in the mod right now, and why? So, I really like Sarasong. Sarasong? I like the idea of, ha of having five crime lords beating the crap out of each other. Yeah. And I, the implementation, I, I, I've seen a rework proposal, which I feel was pretty good, but then it didn't happen, so that's a shame. Uh, like a whole revamp, you know, delete the old MT, get a new one. That, right. So we, we, we have some ideas. It's not in, it's maybe not never going to be in, unfortunately. But I love the flavor. I like this dirty city. I, I, it reminds me a bit, a little bit, you know, the the Terry Pratchett books. Right. Oh, is that and, a bit uh, like the, in my In my world view, it is. I don't know if nice. it's true, okay, but that's kind cool. of how no, I feel I, about it. You've, you've entirely sold me on this now, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking for one of these sort of cities. I always thought, like... Um, uh, like, I, I don't feel it's a clean city. I don't feel it's, yes. it's well, like that. it's like Singapore or Hong Kong when the crime lords rule the, the yeah. opium trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, and uh, well, I still yeah, have Vietnam style great. flashbacks about Sarasung from an old multiplayer. Um, I, I've seen those vods. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I did thirty-eight thousand casualties that? in a single tick against Sarasung. I'm taking the W. Man, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. I will play Saracen because you know I I like to play as a shithole basically. That's it. But that's even, <laughs> even the old M even the old MT, it has you know it has some. You can be critical about it, sure, hmm. but it is flavorful. Flavorful about you know, you have to unite your little little squad of of uh, crime lords, and then you're stuck between two great powers. Which if they don't crumble, you have to think about how to get out, and then you have to. Just, conquer down the river theme so yeah. it's it's eight it's atypical and that's great i love atypical mts yeah i so yeah that's my tag i'm sold yeah yeah i'm so I, I think i will definitely give him a go he entirely sold me on it yeah well uh, Fafadil, sort of... thank you like so much for coming to talk to us uh really appreciate it yeah you've given us some brilliant so... insights and stuff and uh good luck balancing You're welcome. This have fun uh, have fun casting <laughs> and uh to everybody listening, uh, you can actually always ping me with critical questions on the Discord server. Yeah, we are mainly, not a closed main, society. Main, mainly about angels, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no hand in this, so do ping me and I will say no idea. <laughs> Fair enough. Point, point right. in the right direction for who to lynch. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Have a great, uh, great evening or morning or whatever time it is for you guys. You too. You too. Yeah. Take care. See ya. See you later. All right. Yeah, if every well, interview well, we have like... is is that level of quality, I'll be very happy with uh, with yeah, today. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, was I, Thorfindel. I, I I really like that guy. He's helped me out with my own like sub mods for years at this point. So 
Yeah, he's, he's, uh, a, he's, he's a really decent bloke. I've, I've chatted to him a few times. He's, he's, he's just a nice, lovely bloke. Yeah, I can't but, 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 but Sarasung is, is a shit hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I love a shit hole. Yeah. I, like those, I mean, yeah, when you so live much. in one, it exactly, reminds right? you of <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Sarasung is Middlesbrough. <laughs> but, like, not as big. Or way, sorry, way bigger. Uh, exactly. We we share a common <laughs> common heritage of coming from shittles. Look, I feel like if you're from anywhere in uh, the UK, referring to your own town or city as a shithole is just a rite of passage. It is, yeah. It's very <laughs> important. I and mean, there's a certain pride about your shithole, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, no one it, else can call it a shithole. It's my shithole. <laughs> exactly. You know. Um, well, I feel like there's a collective of shitholes, you know, which are objectively shitholes. Grimsby, <laughs> Birmingham, sure. Grimsby, Newcastle. Yeah, you know, South Wales <laughs> entirely. <laughs> we all get to call our place shitholes. Yeah. If somebody from Surrey comes along and calls Oof. us a shithole, that's it. You know. While wow. we were casting there, we did see the end of this war in the East, uh, where Chien Bin Rung ended up um, unconditionally surrendering. And they lost a few yeah. territories. And now, Kudet Kai is another vassal of uh, Verkul Ozovar, who still owns just a single province. But that's entirely fine. That's his whole, his whole mission tree uh, situation, is he has these really big vassals that he keeps very happy. Um, and yeah, he's just... He can conquer all of South Halles purely through vassalage. And that's basically how that tag plays. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah I'm applying through the mission tree. It's pretty easy. Um, but Yan Fang, who are they allied with? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they are. Okay. Are they in a team? I assume they are. They are in a team. Yeah. Uh, Fei Chan is also uh, on the chopping block by the looks of it. Oh, they're not long for this world, which is sad. Yeah. Like, I, I do like this tag a lot. Um, but you really need some friendly faces in North Halles to really make it work. Yeah. Because your power isn't in, you know, your army. It's not in no. the land you hold on the mainland. It's your navy, your income, your skyports, and... Yeah. Exactly. yeah if... And if, if, you, if you're going to butt heads with anyone on the mainland, you'll lose. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Paytech is just too weak. Uh, and if you lose your main capital, that's it. You're done for because that's where we're... you get a wonder, basically. Yeah, yeah it's GG. Yeah, at the moment, fight. Obviously, fighting is just AI. So we're just talking about someone that play doesn't matter in the context of the dev clash. But <laughs> it's sad all the same to see them go. Uh, yeah, we're a very good tag. Uh, I'm still just mourning my little goblins. Oh yeah. What are there any goblin players alive right now? Like who no. is in who is in the Skewer Drake, are they goblin, they goblin or orcs. orcs? Black orcs, yeah. Orcs. Okay, boring. Um We've got Jiren Blue Shields, which looks like they definitely are Definitely don't think form... they're goblins. <laughs> no, no, but they're gonna form the Ram Dwarfs by the looks of Oh them. they are. Which is a quite an interesting tag. It is indeed. Orslam as deer. Um, yeah, I'll look forward to seeing that. Because obviously, Dwarven military has minus 20 cav combat ability. Uh, but if you can overcome that with like your Orslam as deer ideas and... The the dirtiest thing I've actually seen in, in Anbana is... It was uh, dwarves forming Orslam as deer and then getting uh, centaur military. Oh, that is foul. <laughs> it's, it is unbelievably disgusting. Um, any any sort of build that uh, changes the the racial military always it's always good. Like um, if it's in the mission tree, sure. I don't like it when it just it just happens like randomly. Just I'm going to do this for, because this military is because better. Of the stacks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, for example. Um, they're dead now, but Reveria have the ability to change to no military, but it's like it's flavorful, it's through the mission tree, yeah. it's supposed to happen, so Ooh. that's fine. But I don't want to see like Gawed using elf military because they like the fat 10% discipline. 
Speaking of which, uh, the gnomes have actually gotten beaten up by the other gnomes and uh, kobolds. And we were looking at Portnam if they can form a gnome attack rock, and it looks like they can. Uh, what does he? He might need to go after a red scale for that, though. Yeah, I think he might. Yeah. He can also form the Kingdom of Iokand, which I have never seen before. No, I've never seen that either. But he only needs four more provinces for it. Um, what is that country about? Not a clue. Um, but okay. to revive the Gnomish hierarchy, he needs provinces from Red Scale. So unless yeah. they are on a team, which I'm going to quickly go and check if that's the case, then we may end up seeing those guys be enemies with one another. Um, They've also taken exploration ideas, so they're joining the colonial raids. Whoever looks. Port Nam is on Team Canor, and there are quite a few Canorian tags in his team. He's got Selmaldor, Tellum, Clouded Eye, and Pearl's Edge, and Anbancost. Uh, oh, not Anbancost, sorry, they're on the uh, wiki team. Uh, and Istralor uh, is on his team. So if he wanted to go after Red Scale, uh, he'd be in a pretty good good position to do that because red scale is on a different team potentially hmm. on, who's this being played by Zaldini we got a lot of people playing the colonial race actually uh, Busala is taking exploration ideas and uh, Moonhaven is taking exploration ideas um, just do uh, Pearl's Edge is taking exploration ideas uh, Port Nam has, uh, Salmador has. <laughs> Port, Port Nam has even got his um, colonist out right now. Um, yeah. For rating. Okay, what what does everyone see? So Port Nam sees a little bit of the New World already. Uh, Pearl's Edge has got like an island that they can see. Uh, what other players are there here? Wineport is. Are they trying for it? No, they've got espionage. Espionage, which is an interesting one. Interesting, but I don't think all that good. good. I think uh, it's very good when you're fighting AI. Uh, because <laughs> but he's not. He's, he's not, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he has got no problem with aggressive expansion at the moment. So, yeah, it's probably useless. Yeah. Uh, maybe Busalar is... Yeah, he's also going exploration. And Moonhaven is... Istralor isn't. They've gone quality, which I do think is actually the smart play right now, because Anbana uses the vanilla idea set, so it also uses the vanilla um, policy set, and you can't really deny that, like, going quality eco as your opener is ridiculously strong. Yeah, it's the only way that you're going to get... Um, 10% dis uh, discipline from two idea groups. Um, so, yeah, you can't you can't really go wrong with it. I I, I do really like how it's uh, they're not making any effort to change the um, ideas. It's uh, when you when you first play Ambernar, it's a it's a lovely little uh, little rock that you can work from. You got your yeah. vanilla uh, E4 ideas. You know where you stand with them. You don't get overwhelmed new information, because there's a lot of new information already. It's nice. Um, just on that team thing as well, Red Scale is on a team with Silverforge, uh, Sala Aeth, uh, so somebody in the... Uh, they've already formed Sirenvar, actually. Um, so Silverforge, Sirenvar, and then the other people on their team are all in uh, North Aeland here. He's on a team with um, the Yinnick Empire, um, the Marlea, uh, Braylar, uh, Lep and Leptone, uh, and also Sestirande. But I hmm. think I heard that Sestirande died, so... Oh, they're still fine. They're actually going after Wex right now. Very nice. Uh, let's have a look. See what's happening over in Yinland. Uh, Spyhouse died and wants to reseed into Kios. But we'll zoom over to Kios so that you can see what his uh, new situation would be like. 
cool. <laughs> I never was, played it, but you you played Bane. You told me it's very. Good. Uh, so there are there is there's two main tags I think, or well I guess more now. Uh, but you've got a Mayan, which is a kind of Alexander the Great style tag. Um, has a very strangely structured mission tree. Like it's yeah. it's in three separate blocks, uh, and the first block is all about like your your state becoming um, respected, I guess, and becoming strong. Um, but at some point, you ended up having to go against Larankar, who has a bunch of vassals, who no matter if they are loyal or not, they will all become loyal as soon as that war starts, and it's quite a difficult one. Um, but eventually you end up losing a bunch of your land um, through the mission tree to like release a bunch of these uh, Greek city-states along the coast, which is like right. where your power base will be. Um, so that part of the mission tree I didn't really like. Um, but... Do you have the opportunity to take them back, I assume? Mm, not in the mission tree. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Eltacan also has a new mission tree. It's not one that I've uh, seen much of. Um, but it uh, it might be nice. It might be good. And Spy House actually was the one that made it. Uh, is Eltacan in a good situation right now? They seem okay. Decent. They are in positive eco. I wouldn't call it decent, but you know their army is cheap, so it's fine. Um, they're doing okay. They're behind on tech, though. And then our Pedifer is also one of the ones that have recently got a mission tree um, that can also form Kios, I believe. Oh, our Pedifer could form Kios. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a new mission tree for them. Degakian is the original uh, Kios former. But um, yeah, I'm not seeing actually... Uh, the formation thing. Maybe it's in the mission trees now. But yeah, it's an interesting region to play, but it's not really a multiplayer seed, in my opinion, because you're kind of, like, away from everything. There's not much, like, multiplayer-ness going on around you. Hmm. Oh, what is good, though, is we have Bursar Tanches and... Sariand uh, teaming up to take down Erlium. So I guess, I mean, they're allied right now, and I believe they may be on a team together. Um, Karlov is on the writer's team as Bursar Tenshas, and Sariand is being played by. Um, uh, being played by Beagletorn, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, and Beagle Torn is on what team? He is not on the writers' team. They're not. They're they're allied with one another, and he's on the artists' team. It would actually be very nice to uh, have a chat with Beagle Torn at some point today, um, because he is involved in quite a lot of. He's got his fingers in very many pies at the moment. Um, at one point he was the lead for Bulwa, Rahan, and Hales, um, and he's made a bunch of the loading screens as well, including one of the new ones, which is the you know, the Ice Queen shooting ice oh. um, at people. Fantastic loading screen. They're really good. They're yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um, you know, God, there's, there's great opportunities for modders now, like with the uh, increase of like AI generated images working using those as a base to work from it must be such a huge boon for like a for a fancy yeah I'd love to get an arts person in to find out um, yeah maybe when we have a chat with Beagletorn we can ask him if he uh I mean on on that note though it could be quite insulting at the same time because I know a lot of artists have very strong views against AI art so, yeah, yeah, but it's 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 one of those tools that like uh, um, will inevitably be used, right? Like yeah. uh, all, all all video games are, um, for example. Uh, AI so, is here whether we like it or not. It's it, it's just a case that's of right. Yeah, can, exactly. Can we 
make it go in a direction where it isn't theft basically yeah exactly uh can we make it a tool instead of the process have you ever read like road to wigan pa by george orwell i have not oh man he's, he's got a great thing about wigan it. also Basically. definitely a shithole yeah yeah exactly <laughs> definitely part of a shithole <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, up, up wigan <laughs> shithole crew <laughs> he's got like a great bit in it but, but like how loads of uh new technology uh it's inevitably shit and everyone hates it but we all have to use it yeah because yeah. it's you know you're just sort of compelled to use it it's new and easy to use even if you hate it um i mean i don't like ai either but you know fact yeah i mean you're you're an artist yourself and you're the one that brought up ai so have yeah, you used yeah. any ai in your comics no ai is just not funny is it? it's like <laughs> can't make a joke <laughs> so maybe saying. maybe the AI can be the uh, butt of the joke. <laughs> maybe I don't know. But when you're when you're like uh, when you're in game development and you're you're drawing uh, mountain number four hundred and eighty-two. Yeah. Uh, just typing in mountain into an AI and then uh, tracing over it and using it for base to work from is easier. It saves so much time. Yeah. So, yeah, like looking at some of the great projects, for example, like a lot of them are vanilla assets. Like you could slap something together in like an afternoon using AI, right? It would improve the game. But will your conscience allow it? Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, I, I don't even like, uh, I don't like any technology. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, I, the eternal uh, Luddite here. Yeah, I am. I am. I, I truly am. Like I, don't, <laughs> I don't even like using a like a gas boiler, right? <laughs> it's just too advanced for me. But here, here I am with central heating, sitting in disgust. Yeah. Filth, really, isn't it? It is awful. Yeah. It's, uh... But there we are. Oh, small fellows has actually unified his uh, his country. Um. Managed to get uh, all of his. Uh, tribal land, I guess, uh, all integrated. And now, okay. if he was to form his own country, obviously he needs Admin Tech 7, he would become New Shire. So, he's only about 50 dev below Corantar ish 50, 60 ish. Uh, New Wanderers is way below on 75 dev. Um, so, they're, they're out of the running entirely. I was, yeah, he is like. You know, 70 dev below Corantar, but that's like like 40% of his nation. Um, yeah. And Corantar has Castanath, the full thing now. And yeah. he's got easier expansion, I would say. Um, because he's not butting up... Like, Smallfellows is butting up against New Wanderers to their north. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be difficult. He's got Raven Banner to his south. That's going to be difficult. You've got bloody Corantar... So where where does small fellows expand? Whereas Coranta is eating all of Bladebreaker, uh, Marhold, Marhold is there, beautiful. not a player. Um, yeah. So he's got he's got all of this that he can eat without too much difficulty. Um, and I don't believe they're on the same team. Uh, Iron Hammers will fall to. I mean, it's Counts League, Iron Hammers, and Marhold are all allied, so it's one war, and you can gobble those up. Yeah. Please. In Eskan, uh, Korintar is the yeah he's on it. He's the only people on his team are outside of Eskan, so he's in a great place and allied with Corvuria, who is you know relatively strong themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Korintar is definitely in the driver's seat in Eskan, yeah. very very comfortably. Uh, Corvuria has also sewn up their wasteland pretty well. Uh, yeah. So no one can, uh, no one can um, pop block them from their mission to. Uh, question from a humble chat member. This is from Thorfindel. Uh, mm -hmm. What tag do the casters feel has best role played up until now? Oh, uh, in game. Um, ooh, I think game. it, it's it's probably a pretty much it's a different um answer depending on whether you accept um the role play that's been going on in the uh discord channel 
um, for this game as as being roleplay within the game. Because uh, if so, then the roleplay that's going on between Asga Everin and Burst Artentius has been, like, it's it's far and away above everyone else's. Um, they've been doing quite a lot uh, together. Uh, but roleplay within the game, kind of hard to say. Yeah, I assume a lot of it's happening through private chat channels, right? Yeah. And uh, something we can't see. Clearly, clearly can't be Corvuria, uh, because it's not very roleplay to just take the coast and leave the internal bits, right? <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh... <laughs> There's Wasteland bordering his capital. That's not roleplay at all. <laughs> it's not even following my mission trick. Um, but I'd say, you know, Corintar did a very good job of cleaning up the, uh, the green tide. That's what their whole deal is. Um... They're very cute, and their flag is also cute. So clearly, there's some symbology or not symbology, syn synchronization there. Yeah, and also made a fantastic video. So yeah, no, of course. I mean, that's that's role playing in and of itself. Uh, but yes, definitely uh, one of those would be my choice. Is there anyone on chain grass? But unfortunately, not all of the goblins are dead. Yeah. Which is sad, because, uh, like I said last week, I think the the greatest thing in this update is the Gold Fan. Um, when this launches, or if you play on the Bitbucket now, I highly recommend playing them. As the All Clan, yeah. Yeah. There are some tags around still that could form it, uh, yeah, but it would re require players to get on them. Yeah. And there's also Spider Wretch. There is Spider Wretch, yeah. Can they uh, form it? They can, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes. You need to not be a tribe, and all provinces in West Warivar, um Oh no, you need Anvil's Horn, Crack Doom, and Dead End Tunnel. Yeah. One of the three. It's 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 relatively easy to do, yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, bit of a slog. I, I, um... Yeah, it's just picking a goblin, but you like having to form that. I find Marblehead's pretty fun, actually. Um, it's okay. But uh, but the game really starts when you can be all fan. That's when the that's yeah. fun begins. Um, in the Dwarvar, then, I think I'd... Who, who would you be rooting for in the Dwarvar? Uh, none of those fuckers. They killed my goblins. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, no, I do like... I do really like to see... Um, um, the goats. So I'm yeah, quite ram dwarves. Yeah, I like those sort of tags, but uh, take do something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dwarves, dwarves have got shit cavalry, uh, and that mitigates the shit cavalry. Be interesting, interesting to see what Azra Expedition ends up forming, because I guess they've kind of got two options, from what I see. Either they could continue going down the tunnels and form Mithridum. Or they can stop off in Dwarverod 9 and then use the tunnel that connects that to Shattered Crown, murder Shattered Crown, and form Old Dwarf. Or, sorry, form Amaldir. Yeah. Which... Are they doing an expedition at the moment? Yes, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, how many more of those are near? Uh, there's another one. Actually, there's two more real close to their south. Well, Mithraldom is like my favorite dwarf to play, I think. Right. It's a really interesting. I mean, Mithril's just getting guaranteed Mithril on your capital as well. Yeah, and deving that. Yeah, so nice. Your economy is your capital. Your yeah. Focus, um, which is great. Yeah. Uh, are there yeah. any players on Kobolds? There are. We have a red scale player. Yeah. Who's come Who, back? They have come back. They they have taken everything they lost from Nimskod. Uh, so maybe Portnam still have a you know. They, they can take the rest of the gnomes on. Uh, every oh, apparently every province in the West Orvar needs to be owned by goblins or be in the, or, or be in the top cave by crack. So you need to conquer basically the entire region minus crack to form all clan. I yeah, guess I read right. that wrong. Um, okay, fair enough. That's the gist of it. 
It's it's relatively easy. I mean, as soon as you get like uh, a hold and ammo, to pretty much all. Right. Just. Uh, Erlium is about to die. Uh, Phaeton is dead. Yeah, rest in peace, the balloon boys. Yeah, Bianfang has done really well. If you look at the uh, player map mode, they um, are colossal. Bianfang is a shoe in for United. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, they are also enemies with Bektagung. Yeah, um, but uh, lucky you have a power disparity between the two. So, well, Bianfang just beat up Bian uh, Bektagung's uh, friend in Chen Bin Rung, so. Yeah. If I was Bektagung, I would. Yeah. Be writing my will. Yeah, I would do. I would be taking colonial ideas and buggering off. Yeah, for done. sure. I think um, what I'm going to do is send um, the Eagletorn a message say, after his war with Erlium if he wants to come and have a chat. Hmm. So who um, works on the writing? Or? Uh, art. Ah, and he was formerly the lead of Ales and Rahan and uh, somewhere else hmm. uh, and Bulwar. Yeah, cool. Alright. I sent him a message and we'll see if he wants to come and chat. You see players inside of the, the lake fed. You did. We do have uh, a couple of lake fed players. Uh, we have uh, Ditto on uh, Zerkanrek, and he is the leader of the South Island tier team. Uh, and we have Schwendigo on Bajevgiv. Nailed that. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, so for those, uh, for those who don't know, too, like Lake Fed is always a powerhouse in multiplayer. Yes, they are kind of broken in yeah. multiplayer. Is is wouldn't be unfair to say. Yes, um, but we are being reworked, right? That's that's it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon, because um, right now they're not in a good spot. Uh, in multiplayer, basically, what the Lake Fed does is the Federation leader. Goes through their mission tree, does things, and then just annexes all of the lake feds in one go. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Instantly becomes like number one world power. Uh, yeah, so. And then they can just throw their weight around everywhere else. And Enders is uh, looking <laughs> at the stream, apparently, he knows I'm, I'm looking at his country. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting mission tree. I just don't think it works for multiplayer, is my opinion on it. Yeah. I mean, I always find in the Forbidden Plains a lot more fun playing as the Ogre Dwarves. Yeah. That's just my personal take. I mean, Centaurs are another nation that, if allowed to go wild, uh, can get the, you know, when they form, uh, they're called Current Uleg. Yeah. Become just ungodly powerful um, yeah. with their cavalry. God, what was the. Uh, I think you played a game a while ago where somebody was playing a model player. They didn't use cannon. <laughs> and yeah. <they> well. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually. It was the same player who played a Sarasung um, against me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's a case of. When they formed Current Uleg, uh, I was actually playing as the Phoenix Empire. And we had a few wars against each other. Um, I would completely dominate the fire phase because he didn't use cannons. <laughs> and then in the shock phase, like it was like, yes, 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 no, 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 no. Because no, no, no. no. <laughs> the shock phase is, it just turns on you so, so yeah. hard. I tell you um, what, playing nations like that is so much fun. Uh, like, yeah. It's the same with a dedicate. Like, uh, <laughs> you just get your shit kicked in with a fire phase, and then suddenly it's like, oh, yes, I'm winning. Yeah. You, just, you just have to hold out through that initial fire phase just yeah. to get to the shock phase. <laughs> they had us in the first half moments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to I'm gonna drag uh, Beagle Torrin in then. Okay, sounds like a plan. Uh, hello there, Beagle Torrin. How are you doing? 
Hello, hello, I'm doing all right. Good, good. I see you won your war against Erlium. Suppose it wasn't too difficult for you? No, it was uh, It was a bit of a walk in the park. Yeah. We were sort of collapsed a bunch of other Sonova nations on top of them, so not much they could do. Yeah, I mean, pretty much a shoe in for the Phoenix Empire. But... I'd say either Sariand or Bursar Tanches. Point. And you are on opposite teams, so uh, could, uh, could see some warfare there, potentially. Yeah. We'll have to see how things go. Right now, we sort of have a deal that um, will help each other consolidate the region, and uh, neither of us will form the Empire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody might As long as that deal. deal holds, of course. Um, so, in Anbana, what do you and what have you done? I know it's a lot, so this might be... A list. I'll, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna name everything, but it's it's a few things. Yeah, I worked on um, a few of the Sun Elven mission trees, such as Varamhar and Sariand and the Phoenix Empire mission tree. Nice. Uh, I did the Jadari mission tree. I know you are a big fan of Jadari fans, so um, <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, they're just very zealous, and I I get very <laughs> overwhelmed by their zealotry. <laughs> well. You have me to thank for that. Um, <laughs> I did the command mission tree. Oh, very oh. nice. I've heard very uh, good things about it. Yeah, we've been talking about the commands a little bit. Definitely recommend playing it. I think it turned out very well. Yeah. All right then. Um, and I did the the Elephant Lord's mission tree. So everybody that's broken in multiplayer, <laughs> destroying everybody with their <laughs> elephant calves. That's also my fault. Okay. The tree we're has been talking. picked. <laughs> <laughs> we're literally just talking to Paul Findle about the yeah. elephant. The elephant I mean, it's been, I believe it's been on the list for rebalancing for a while, but I don't, don't, just, they haven't gotten to it yet. First question. <laughs> yeah. um, what state of mind were you in when you decided that a mission that required you to have a hundred cav combat ability was a good idea? Well, here's the thing. Cav always sucks, so the only way to make Cav not suck is by making it overpowered, right? There are only there are only <laughs> two ways about this. Either it sucks or it's overpowered. I think you're actually right. You're right. It's true. You never use cavalry until they're overpowered, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With that's... or a center, so you. Yeah, I, you've got a point. That the middle ground of cavalry being okay means that they don't get used at all yeah, yeah. i hate that so basically right. <laughs> all the, all the calf oriented nations in the mod are all just really overpowered versions of calf nations yeah um and, uh, you get the centaurs you get jadari which obscenely strong cavalry early on uh, I think Ademek has really strong cav. Really yeah. good strong cav, yeah. Um, I don't know about Fern with the Wyvern Riders. Mr. Or uh, Marhold with Griffin. I, I think they're just okay. They're good enough to like sprinkle into your troops, but you don't like full blown cav arm because they can do it. Yeah. Kavori is the same. And I, I would say also the, uh, the Goat Dwarves in there. The cavalry is good, but it's not good enough to be entirely goat arm. Unless, yeah. unless you uh, have centaur military. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and uh, the reason I'm part of the art team is that I did, um, I think, like two thirds of the loading screens for Ambanar. They're really nice. good. Yeah, but you went so gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I was the one of uh, the floating city. Was that one yours? No, that, that one was the, like, not one of mine. That one was one of the that one was commissioned by the Chinese Ambanar community. Aha, yeah. okay. Because yeah. I was gonna say it does seem like artists. a a bit of a different style to the rest. Yeah, yeah. I was it's wondering really if you good, were trying out new things job. or. Um, what is your favorite art piece that you've done then for Ambanar? Ooh, favorite. Um, because I have one, and it's not one of the loading screens. That I did. Yeah. Um, bu, 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 bu. I'm trying to remember what loading screens I've done. One of my favorites is the, actually the two dwarven ones might be my favorite ones. Ah, the one of the heroes gate. Yeah, the heroes gate and the underground. I don't remember if there was a specific hold. 
right yeah children of ruin one i like that one yeah, yeah. those are really cool i like I say, i'm i'm a stickler for art i always like using them for obviously for uh, thumbnails and such thumbnails. <laughs> yeah um I, I do like my art and um but i'd say my favorite piece of art that i've seen from you is it's either jad's daughter or his wife the harpy it's his daughter it's his daughter i thought that art piece is just amazing mm. I, and yeah i'm a i'm a jad hater but i i love his daughter <laughs> during that pretty well i get yeah. it is in the mod technically it was originally just done as an independent piece and then at some point we turn it into some mission screen mission tree icons aha uh -huh. maybe i'll be able to find it here on the advisor portraits because i was always incredibly impressed by the dwarven advisors Luck actually no i standing. didn't there was a bunch of other amazing artists that worked on those i think including mike i don't try to remember who did the uh the dwarves dwarves there is on up. rp it's diplomacy really uh i think the um who else has got particularly good ones uh gnomes have got really lovely ones too i really like the gnomes. yeah they're really fun. Uh, kobolds also pretty cool. And I, I love the touch of the kobolds. The, uh, the advisors uh, change uh, scale color. <laughs> yeah. It's just a small little thing. But it's, it's very cool. important. Yes, it is. Um, so, yeah, I have I have you here as your role being as senior contributor, but that is a little bit, like, deceptive. You do, well... like, so many different things. I think most of senior contributors have worked on a bunch of different things. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've like I've been region lead for a while. Um, yeah, I think everybody who's been around for a while has bounced around between different things. I guess not everybody's been artist, but people have worked on different things, done systems, mission trees, um, added regions. Yeah. Various things. Have you done any work for uh, the new Sarhal area? No, I haven't actually. I've not been okay. in Sarhal at all. Okay. My, I've, I've always been focused on Bulwar and then Rahan and a bit of Halas. Well, Bulwar for me is my favorite region in the mod. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy with how that area turned out. So uh, mm -hmm. I guess thank you for that one. Um, You're welcome. And what, of course, uh, all the other wonderful people working on the on the Bulwar team. We had a we had a streak of some very amazing people working on the on the up, on that specific Bulwar focused update that brought a lot of things like the incidents and stuff. Were you was, involved uh, in the uh, incident? I was vaguely involved i sort of oversaw the project but i wasn't directly involved in the creation of the incident themselves right. they are some of it is some of my favorite content like and with the with the phoenix empire as well you said you did that mission tree um yeah. it is like say my favorite area to play phoenix empire is just it's entirely my jam so mm. um with that said though with the phoenix empire a lot of the um the missions do give quite a lot of like you know permanent claims and and own all of a region um but i suppose <laughs> you it... can say it i think the phoenix empire of the region and out of the three main formables of the of the region the phoenix empire mission tree is one of the weaker ones right um and i have ideas of reworking some of the mission trees um, oh. some of the missions from the phoenix empire um, I cannot promise when or if that exactly will uh, will come to pass, but it's something I would like to do at some point. Um, right. I'm not going to change too much of the conquest missions because um, I think those are in an interesting spot. Um, the there main thing is I want to change some of the conversion missions and maybe some of the missions where you go into Sarhal right. and make those more internal focused or some missions that might change depending on who you form the empire as um because i will say for for other conquest missions at least they have the uh the kind of timed aspect thing for them as well which um i guess not a lot of very conquesty focused nations that i've seen at least have um 
know, conquest all of this area within a certain time limit to get an extra bonus. Um, yeah. so at least it has that, I will say. Um, do you have anything specific in mind to make the uh, region a bit less uh, blobby? Is uh, we've got a question from chat about that. The re you mean the do they mean or do you think they mean the early part of Bulwark gameplay or the later part where you've reunited the region and then just expand? Uh, let's go with both. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it's tricky to make a region non-blobby. The reason um, some places are non-blobby, such as um, Anor or uh, Rahan, is simply because you've got really high aggressive expansion when you conquer in, in those regions. Um, part of the nature of what makes Vool or Blobby is that mission trees give claims, and um, I think the main countries that you play have ambitions of uniting the region. That's just what they are like. Yeah. Um, combined with lower development means that you can pretty quickly expand and unite the region. So early gameplay, I don't see that changing very much. Okay. As for um, when you've united the region, I think Surakesh is always the country that is the non-blobby variant. Um, it's the human form that just stays in the region. Phoenix Empire and Jadari both have that legacy of Jahar, so you sort of get the flavor of if you're gonna blob, then it would not feel true to the nation. Right. Um, that's, that's a fair point. Yeah. There... I would like there to be at some point i don't see myself making this but uh, this is something that i think should be the case there to be a mission tree for um a jadari a jad empire that's not formed by jadari right now the jad empire mission tree you only get if you form jad empire as jadari and anybody else doesn't get a mission tree right okay and i think there should be an alternative mission tree for the jad empire if you form it as say uh Rayuel or um I know what other nations can flip Jad. I would guess any, any of the like, or so, for example. Well, like a sort of necrocracy where you sort of worship the fallen Jad. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> like it's not that. necessarily the worshiping of Jadar, more like worshiping. It's it's worshiping Surakel, uh, Surael in the uh, in the traditions that the Jadar established, yeah. right? Yeah. Jedi is often sort of said, yeah, he is the prophet of Surreal. I don't know how. I wouldn't compare Jedi necessarily to Jesus or Muhammad, mm. as people are wont to do. It's more like he came. He's more. He is a prophet, but he's he's not one to be worshipped. He's just the first guy to promote these ideas. Right. Yeah. Not not wanting to be worshipped and being worshipped are two different things, though, right? Uh, yeah. That's that's <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Clearly, the only one worthy of worship in Bulwar, though, is uh, by Gal Keladora Bersartanjuir. <laughs> I think you'll find that it's pronounced Keladora. I, th I think I think I don't care. I, I think I think <laughs> yeah. The the tradition of any fantasy is mispronouncing. Literally everything that's in. Oh my god! Look, I I even made it so that the sub mod that I use for multiplayer changed the spelling back to a C. Uh, <laughs> I will die on this hill. <laughs> I will die yeah, on the hill the of sad change of, <laughs> The change of C to K was as an effort to sort of change Bulwari elves, like Sun elves, from um, from Moon elves because they used to use exactly the same name list. Uh huh. And so we're like, we need to set them apart a little bit so that if we change, remove all Cs, set them to Ks, and then stick with a specific sort of naming and language scheme that keeps the regions a bit more different. So that was your we've... fault? Well, not just my fault, but... But you are the one I can blame. <laughs> okay. I just, you know, putting, putting a, you know... I, ha I had some... Uh, some opinions on the matter i think i think this is setting out a tradition where we have to blame at least one death for something <laughs> yeah. in every interview we do exactly yes who did you blame last time 
Thorfindor is entirely responsible for removing angels. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Even though yeah. he wasn't, but he didn't tell us who. We'll need to find out yeah, who we blame yeah. for that. <laughs> Pretty suspicious. Um, I don't think the person who is most responsible is playing at the moment. Yeah, it's a good job, really, because if he yeah. was, oof, oh, a piece of our mind. So many blames going on him. <laughs> um, another Here... question from chat for you. Um, yeah. Bulwar is practically the only region that mixes different types of administration and military. Is there any other plans for countries like this? Um, well, I can think of one country um, which should have the things mixed, but I'm not sure if it actually does. It's one of the Yanjin countries in Yanshen. Okay. Um, which should have Harimari military and human administration. Um, but I don't know if it actually does. Would As Ascaray, do they have elven administration? Ooh, they might question. be another. They're dead now, so we can't even tell. <laughs> I don't think they start out with elven administration, but they might change to it at some point. Uh, there could also be, maybe, does Korintar have that? I know they have a whole deal with half orcs. Um, Oh, actually, maybe Grom. Does Grombar do something? Uh, well, they have, you know, state-mandated orc waifus, so I would assume so. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is, it definitely Bulwar seems to be, like, the central hub for having those be mixed. Yeah. yeah. Orantar doesn't. Frozenmore doesn't. Um... Well, I think, of course, many different countries can change their military. Yeah. Um, I don't know that many of them actually do, and for even fewer that, well, aside from Bulwar, um, that that start out with mixed um, military and admin. Right. Yeah, I can't think of any Um Bravaria maybe as well, but they're also dead. Yeah, that I mean, is... you could make a case for some Raj nations that they should. Yeah. But... Hmm. Would be nice to see more of that, for sure. That would be cool. I agree. Yeah, I mean, a lot but... of countries, like in Kanor, a lot of countries have, are just homogeneously human or homogeneous, homogeneously orc or elf oh, or whatever. It looks like New Wanderers is getting... Uh the chat upon. Oh yeah, they're like I said they had no friends in their region, so they're yeah. uh they're gone. Yeah, they're they're having issues. I can't actually see what's going on there. Uh Corantor and uh small fellows are the two most powerful nations by quite a margin. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh... No Wanderers is losing to Corantar, Small Fellows, Corvuria, Ibava and Adshaw. Um, and Oof. all they've got as friends is Silverforge and Moonhaven. I mean, and like, yeah, Kavor Kavor is, Kavor is not even lifting a finger. I mean, yeah, they don't need to. They don't need to. Yeah. 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 Korintar alone would be enough to win that war. So, uh, I guess it's all going to small fellows. Right? Yeah. Which what is your. Cause... Sorry, you'll keep on. Yeah, because only one can really unite Eskan. Uh, Korintar, small fellows. Wars consolidation haven't happened yet. Yeah, but from what so... I hear, Corridor is in the best situation for that. But oh yeah, yeah no. by far. That, that might change because let's have a look. Corridor is on two seven eight. Uh, Deb or fellow is yeah. on uh, one nine three. So yeah. if uh, Small Fellows takes New Wanderers, uh, Small Fellows is actually increasing. And Small Fellows got a powerful army because of the new mercenary items. So. Hmm. That's true. I mean, Korantar is on the same team as Gorfuria and Tungur, so right. that could form a strong block. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know what team Small Fellows is on. Um, a dead one. Wait, no, they're a different. A dead team. Yeah, no, they're on. Um, Small Fellows is on team. They're on. Man, they're on your team. Are they? Small fellows. Oh wait, no, 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 they're not. You're, uh, I thought you were on team. Right no, you're on team artists. Yeah, no, small fellows is on team uh, writers. Um, uh, so they've got Adshaw and Ibavar yeah. and Bian Fang with them. 
I think they're supposed to have been announced, but there's team alliances. Yeah. Uh, and... They are in the announcements. So yeah. Kind of hard to keep track of all the alliances at this point, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Writers is uh, allied with artists. So okay. with us. Well, there you go then. So, um, Small Fellows and Corrent are, are in different teams, but allied teams. Yeah. So it seems that's uh, going to be. I still think Correntar is going to break that and, and just. I don't know. I, I, I can't get away from the idea that, you know, teams are all well and good, but. People are going to go against that at some point. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, so, Cyadan is not on your team, are they? No. What are your plans with them? Um, well, eventually, um, I need to bring the remaining Jadari uh, Desert Elves back into the fold. Of course. So, I think we're going to clash there. There's also the really, really annoying situation where I would very much like to proclaim a protection of all the people along the Upper Suram, but for some reason, Shadow Dreamer thought it was a good idea to subjugate Askasur when they destroyed Segdir. Haha, <laughs> so you might have to fight some orcs as well. Some orcs and some, harp some harpies. Always good to Just see. Average day in the life of a sun elf. <laughs> through that uh yeah, yeah, any but... other questions you were talking so you're still involved with the arts quite a lot um i mean i don't very much do a lot of small pieces for the for um, the mod i occasionally do like a monument art or something like that we were we were talking before it was like such a big discussion in the games industry in general about AI's impact on doing small little uh, 2D art thing. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, has there been a discussion in the team about how to utilize it or if it be utilized? Um, where we use it? AI for low impact things. Um, yeah. Generally. Like, it, we wouldn't ever use AI for a loading screen. Yeah. We've been using AI a little bit for um, things like monument art. Yeah. Or icons occasionally. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty much how most game companies are doing it too, actually. Yeah, small yeah. little low-impact yeah. things, so yeah, that's good. Something that can't be pointed out by the community is, ah, this this is clearly AI, and therefore I will hate you for it. Yeah. I mean, it's also just like some things take a lot of time to do and don't have too much impact, so... Yeah. And we only have so many artists to like put castle, on different castle, jobs. Castle number 258 is... Uh, doesn't yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like sometimes for mission tree icons we use some okay yeah, yeah i i think it's uh it has a good result again it's yeah. like uh far as, yeah, people like we try to use it as little as possible but That's occasionally it can be useful some elements are like if it's something that would be scrutinized very closely or is large on your screen like obviously a loading screen definitely yeah. I, I wouldn't like to see it there, yeah, but it's it's, it's 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 interesting, right? Because the results are often very good, but people will uh, avoid doing it for backlash more than the results. You know what I mean? So it's an yeah. interesting thing. Uh, I, I mean, the it... results can be very nice, but they can also be kind of dead, especially mm, yes. for character art uh, done with um, AI. You can pretty quickly tell that it's AI yeah. because AI very often has a specific style. That's right. Yeah. I feel sad for the original artist behind that style, whose yeah. whose original <laughs> style is now seen as that shitty AI style. Well, that's, that's well like the thing is, it's not it's not a bad style. It's just a very specific, it's a specific look. Yeah, yeah. That AI art has. It's um, it's because it's an amalgamation of loads of different things, so it becomes a yeah. So there's a there's a game that I've been playing a lot of called. Um, uh, Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, very good little city builder, and they mm. they uh, they clearly used AI to do all their character traits, and it's so obvious that it's AI it can be yeah. a little bit jarring. Yeah. So I think the, the trick is is to use it and then you know go onto Photoshop and do a little bit of judging <laughs> up, give it a bit of flavor and a bit of panache over the top of the baseline art. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I yeah. think a lot of um, a lot of people who post AI art do some of that as well. Yeah. It's just yeah. You I'm never now, get I'm now scanning different thing. monuments no, and like, is right. this is this AI? Do we, do we think? <laughs> do we think the 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 Esu Vrem Great Project is AI art? But like uh, one of the hole. things that like mods often struggle with is getting all these little tiny little details uh, in, right? Like monument art, for example, right? No one's really passionate about going around and filling in all the monuments art, yeah. art yeah. style. So I know I think it, I think it can be quite a boon. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, I'm not a particularly big fan of monuments as a mechanic. I've, I don't think yeah, it should have been added to E4. I don't think yes, she's been added yeah. to Imperator either. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I I'm but inclined. I'm I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I think the way monuments work in Vicky, where they're just buildings that do a thing, is kind of okay. Vicky too, of course. We're talking. On. We'll we'll not get into uh, opinions <laughs> on Vicky three. <laughs> Lambert's a huge fan. Oh, I'm a huge fan of sharing my opinion. <laughs> um, I mean, depends on what you what you're calling a monument in uh, in Vicky Three, because like, there's the unique ones like you know the the White House, but there's also yeah. like um, modify unique modifiers on various states. Um, yeah. Niagara Falls, for example. So yeah. I think like that kind of thing would work in Anbana. Yeah. Um I don't I don't I mean, see I think... Imperator monuments working in Anbana yeah. though. We we've sort of settled at least it depends on what region you look at. I think every region handles monuments a little bit differently. But I think in Hales we sort of settled on monuments monuments primarily being modifiers on uh, the area or the region. Yeah, yeah, Thor was just talking about that. Yeah, which yeah. I think is is a better thing to do. I think that's how it should always have been done. Honestly, it feels weird to have a building that gives a global modifier. I mean, we of course have always done we have done that before through um, missions, but it's it's the problem that Vanilla has, right? It's sort of, yeah, yeah. Thor, Thor mentioned sort of collect them all. Uh, I think that's the main. Have, that's right? my main issue with them: the, the the Pokemon attitude people have towards monuments. I agree. I definitely think keeping military buffs out of monuments is like a huge thing, though. Is what is most yeah. needed. I I can very much tolerate a lot of um, global modifiers as long as they don't give um, global impacts on like your your economy or your military. You know, um, I think there's a few things I quite like about global. There's a few global modifiers. For example, the North Citadel has a global modifier to governing capacity modifier, and that I'm okay with because it's like that. That works. Yeah, right. It's like, like if it's an administrative building. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I quite. I, I think that Bristol works. Tensha should have something like that. Not that they need anything to for their governing capacity. That's their whole bags deal. But you know, a little bit extra. Why not? Uh, <laughs> estate multi too pretty good so i'm fine with um yeah yeah but then only if you can have like one of them like i think monuments that are like administrative buildings make sense if they are buildings that only work if it's your capital province that's right mm, yeah 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 i completely agree yeah for sure uh extra merchant too is pretty okay i'm fine with it. yeah you could have like a bizarre building that's uh yeah i think from what I remember of Vanilla and Banar's uh, monuments, because I often run with um, like monument adding mods uh, mm -hmm. on top, uh, but for like just and Banar base, I feel like the the strongest monument was always the one in uh, Bal Ward, the um, that gives manpower recovery. And I think that's one of the only like military style. Um, monuments in in the mod which hmm. is certainly appreciated uh because a lot of the monument adding mods i have to rebalance to remove a lot of military things i tell yeah. you what like uh replacing a lot of uh province modifiers permanent problem modifiers with monument pretty good because they're essentially the same thing yeah yeah 
I mean, it used to be that monuments only had art and no description. Now they have descriptions as well, which is makes them so much better. Definitely. Yeah. For example, like in Kasnov, where you build like all the different, the forge, for example, in the market. Yeah. Those could be theoretically monuments instead of problems. Yeah. That's right. But then, do you get problems with people who don't own that monument DLC? Because it you do. To the yeah. DLC basically, thing. you what you'd have to do is you'd have to. Um, make a version of each monument or if the most important monument would have to have a version that is functional for people who don't have the dlc yeah it has to be a uh, a province modifier app if you don't have a dlc and if you have a dlc yeah especially if you have that monument uh like engaged in the mission tree yeah so i mean we we don't we don't always say oh you have to we have to make an alternative version for if you don't have the dlc because some things you just can't do mm. like if you do if you want to play an Ascan, you better have the dlc that gives you uh migration right yeah yes yeah of course, yeah <laughs> like we're, we can't make an entire system that's independent for if you don't have the dlc it's just you better have the dlc otherwise it just doesn't work for you yeah play somewhere else is is migration a dlc thing because i've just thought serpent spine would be horrific <laughs> like what would you do you can't if you can't migrate you would do fuck all. Would yeah, just... exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it works. Like, do um, if you play in in vanilla in uh, in America, yeah, and you don't have the migration DLC, do you sit there? But does the AI then also sit there, or does the AI do does the AI migrate around while you don't? Yeah, I have no idea. Actually. You just. You, you can sit and dev and devastate your own province <laughs> and then give up and play DLC. somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have... Uh... Oh, no, they changed that now. It's free now, isn't it? It used to be the case where you couldn't dev unless you had a DLC. Uh, um, I honestly don't remember. That sounds awful. Yeah. Oh, go. yeah, no, that was that came in with common sense. Mm, that's it, yeah. Because it was it. common sense. Mm. <laughs> I am still not a big fan of... The development system so uh same same people nobody understands what development actually means including the devs of eu4 well, i'm yeah. hoping that whatever happens in eu5 will get an imperator style um i think it's incredibly unlikely that we'll see another development system um mm -hmm. yeah. because even comments that we've seen from johan who we're all assuming is um, going to be leading EU5, um, yeah. say things like, he's never going to make a, a, a mana system again, and how do you have a development system if you don't have a mana system? And also, he's very in favor of population systems. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think Imperator yeah. has a good system. Yeah. I, I wasn't a huge fan of Imperator. Imperator uh, has a good system now. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yes. On release, it, it wasn't. For sure. I mean, still, the, the way Imperator does pops is a little weird. Um, because basically, because it's divided by legal status of a Roman citizen, yeah. it's like, what does that mean in a country that does not have the same way of citizenship and yeah. nobility? And it's a little, it's, it, it's very based on the way that Rome handles citizens, citizenship, and it Ne doesn't necessarily work. I think this, uh, it, it, it's not a very accurate representation of what it's supposed to represent, and that's, that's right, yeah. part of the confusion. It would be much more simple if you just did a lower class, middle class, upper class. Exactly, like in MEI thing. and you in taxes, right? Yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say as well though, one of the things Johan has said recently was that he prefers the Victoria Two uh, population system to the one that he has uh, in modern Imperator. So we could we could see a very interesting EU5 if uh, if all things come together yeah, in the I, right way. You know, I cannot see Vicky 2 system working well in the context of uh, all mine because I guess the Victorian period is very different. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know how it works in Vicky. It's Every every class of population is just listed in your population tab. They have their own uh, like lots lots of pie charts, really. Yeah, yeah. 
Lots of pie charts. Lots of pie charts. I don't like pie charts. I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I'm in favor of this so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a, it's an interesting system, but it works in a Victorian context where like uh, the average person has a lot more power than. Yeah. In all where, frankly, the ruling class did everything. But everywhere else, it's like the sign lines of most countries. I mean, like, can you can you imagine like a pop system in Tudor England? Doesn't really make much sense. Ah, uh, yes, because I've played M A on Texas. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, in reality, it's like a mercantile in upper classes, and the, the peasants are there to farm. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, whereas in Vicky, like you know, the peasants are there to have a revolution. Um, so they they play. Well, like the. the... Mayor and Texas, I think, is a good. Yeah, I think that well, Mayor and Texas still has to work within the development system, but what they have is a system whereby buildings cost like ungodly amounts of money, and yeah. the development uh, is a calculation between how many pops of various types and the um, infrastructure in the province. It's like a calculation between those gives you your development, which I think is like the best version I've seen um but hopefully um EU5 won't take everything from the newest version of Mayo Texas because it kind of got a little bloated yeah I agree, <laughs> so I, agree. Yeah. I think um, it's sort of MEU and Texas with imperative play though yeah I the main thing I want for whatever comes next is a game that actually accurately uh, simulates the difficulty of maintaining um, territories far away from yourself. Oh, yeah. 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 Which, funnily enough, Mayo and Texas has. <laughs> That's what the... what brought this thought up in my head just yeah. now. Uh, definitely a lot of inspiration should be taken, I think. Yeah. Do you know what I don't want? 3D portraits. <laughs> you know what you're gonna get regardless of what you yeah, want? Yeah, I know, I know. 3D I'm portraits. Go portraits. It's uh, like... I'll say for us, 3D portraits are also not a good thing because right. they just mean l way more workload. Yeah. yeah. Modern workload is definitely a lot higher. Yeah. Yes. For that. I'm, I am really looking forward to like uh, Ambernaz Vicky Free mod, but it's, um, it must be pretty hard to work within the framework of Vicky Free. Around. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the reason that it's not out yet is just, I mean, art is one thing. Luckily, if we figure out all the art stuff uh, for different races, then you can do a lot of porting between different versions. Yeah. Like uh, Crusader Kings and, uh, and Vicky, but... Question yeah, um, for you. Yeah. Have you figured out how to implement the day-night cycle into Vicky 3 Anvanar. <laughs> and does the sun rise in the east or the west in Anvanar? <laughs> well, it's uh, a fancy I mean, we've not looked at so... it yet, but I think it just ri I think it rises in the in the east. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... I think it's the same as Earth. Uh, well, I hope not... so, definitely, because a lot of the writing for the Jad Empire mission tree localization is based on that idea. Well, in Vicky 3, as in the, just the game, the sun rises in the west, so maybe it's, it's time for Anvanar to, to make a choice. Why does it rise in the west? <laughs> yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. It was uh, some sort of technical thing. Uh... I don't quite understand it either. Um... <laughs> I don't know. But it's a fantasy setting, it works. Just re retcon it. So. <laughs> well, the, the original like the original release of Vicky 3 had a compass like drawn on the map uh, where East and West had been switched. So ah. it, it, it could be... I, I'm not going to say it's down to that, but it, I mean, it's who canon. knows? Canon. <laughs> Real world canon. <laughs> oh my god yeah but you know I, I, yeah. I, I will try the Anvanar Victoria 3 mod um, well hopefully like by the time it's out Vicky will be in a much healthier position fingers crossed <laughs> I don't I, I, I doubt it <laughs> I mean I it mean, can't be in a worse position I think Lambert <laughs> has some, some issues with Vicky 3 on a way more fundamental level than can be fixed by patches <laughs> yeah, yeah possibly yeah 
Oh yeah, um, Azkari is called the Sunrise Empire, so yeah, the, the sun yeah. must rise in the east. Speaking of which, I have only just noticed the table of Ambonar. It's actually got Ambonar and stuff in it. Where was that? That's such a nice little touch. Yeah. That's cool. Well, where's where's, where's my happened, room? But yeah. Where's where's the my room and people shuffling papers and opening That's doors it. every 12 seconds? I, I quite like that, to be fair. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it could be quieter, but it's a nice touch. I know that's cool, a little Ambonar thing at the top. That's yeah. nice. It's really nice. When was that added? I have no idea. It's been a been a long time. I think it's been there for. Oh, the war a year or two. Um, is over, <laughs> and a... yeah, new wanderers have lost a few provinces to small fellows. Not, not as much as I would have thought. Oh, all things considered, I suppose they had a lot of allies, so the war score could not get to a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, they had they were fully occupied, and it was like eleven percent. Yeah. So I uh, I think it was all right, and Riveria has returned to the map. Oh, Wait. we've got our first little bits of colonies. Um, Wait a minute. Not player colonies, but how did Port Nam lose? It's hard. Oh, interesting. Was it a rebellion? Are they AFK? What's going on? I don't know. What happened there? That was very weird, isn't it? But uh, yeah, that that everyone supporting Portnam, yeah, didn't work out. No. Can I draw you guys' attention to something very obnoxious? Of course. Sure. Um, Harpylen, can you look at their ruler? Uh, they they're now called Ayarlaren. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Ara Ayaralen. Look at their ruler and look at their military. The ruler is Iranian Harpy and their military is Oh no! Oh no <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Oh no okay, so we have a, a new example of administration and military not syncing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Wait, I don't think I've ever seen the AI go undead army. No, it's very rare, isn't it? That's interesting. It doesn't happen very often. Um, I mean, they start with a powerful mage ruler, so that might have been part of it. I remember from the when when PDX played Ambonar, they had to fight a Laurent, which had a Witch King. Oh, oh nice. Man, PDX should do more dev matches, and they should play it. And yeah, now it's been because it's a long time since they did it, and it's only updates. Look, I'll, I'll I'll straight up cast for them. I don't care. They they don't even need to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> they should do it in. Uh, they should do like a grandest land for Amber now. Yeah, it would be cool. Where would you host it? Uh, I mean, it'd have to be in in Barcelona at the moment, right? Because well, normally they works. do it in like a Polish castle, don't they? Oh, having a very normally, entirely yeah. new thing. I think they should do it in Western Finland. Yeah, well, Western <laughs> Finland's not real, therefore it's a fantasy realm. Therefore, it's... <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Sweden. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> 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 ah yes, Western Finland, aka Eastern Sweden. So with I'm your dealings what's the most with fancy location that you could do, most fancy location? I don't the know. Fantasy e location. Oh, fantasy. Brazil. What? Brazil isn't real. <laughs> it's not real, is it? It's um, a country like that can't exist. Probably. Do it at some theme park. Do it at Disneyland. <laughs> Brazil land. I could go to like Visby, in Gotland. <laughs> That's still mm. got, like, you know, the the, the site of the earliest European battle or something there. The thing is, why the reason why it's in Poland is because Polish, uh, Polish castles are cheap to rent. That's a fair point. Yeah. Somewhere in Central Eastern Europe where there's a lot of castles and they're cheap. I mean, France shouldn't be too difficult either. Uh, yeah, is it? Just That's most French castles that you can rent probably don't have internet. Oh, yeah, true. I see no one... Be able to communicate with you because the French don't like speaking English. Um, From what Slovakia I have to heard. is pretty nice, and also that's not real, so, but, well. <laughs> oh, the, the political uh, 
commentary coming out of Father Loris today is kind of wild. No, no country is real. I mean, that's my that's my politics. Countries don't exist. Yeah, yeah, it's just a uh... clearly. <laughs> Obviously, we all need big, to go big to. Is, is fooling you all. Obviously, we all need to go to New Zealand and have it in Hobbiton. Oh yes, yes. On Paradox's dime, because yeah, ain't no way yeah. I'm paying for a flight to <laughs> no, New Zealand. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all four of the Australian Paradox funds, like, yeah. like uh, New Zealand's gonna be really happy to go there. It's the low cost of travel. So, question for you. As Sarian, you've got that um, deal with Bursar Tenches. Uh, which one of you is going to have to deal with the Army of the Dead? Um, I think we both are, because I just got a, an estate mission to, to conquer a province from, uh, uh, from the Harpies. Uh -huh. Good luck. We're going to do it together. We're going to both die. Actually, no. We did it before. We'll do it again. Well, well at the moment, the AI the hasn't... Uh, like built up well i probably shouldn't tell you this they haven't built up their um their army to their new force limits potential um so it's... there is time also because they switched away from harpy military their roofs turned off so they're much easier to siege now mm, for sure and they've still got uh, they're still monsters right so their province is still cheap as dirt yeah so it shouldn't be too bad that's one hundred percent defensiveness from the roost. If they're yeah, able, and now it's which they are not. Now it's down to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Fifty percent from mountains. Bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, I think that's very good. Right. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for yeah. coming to uh, chat with us. Really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Uh, is there anything you want to like announce or let uh, let the people watching know before? Um... Before we let you get back to your country um i mean i hope i have some support from the chat in um my menace from the east i, I don't, don't want uh everybody just just boo Sayadan and uh shadow dreamer when the inevitable conflict happens for sure um but yeah good luck with the game and uh for your future stuff in anbana yeah well definitely thank you very talk much Yep. See how it yep. updates when See you, you guys. when you inevitably betray them and form the Phoenix Empire. <laughs> <laughs> One of you is gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, it has to. It's a betrayal coming for sure. <laughs> All right. See you later, mate. Say anything. So, that is. See ya. So, where do we want to look at now? Like... The wars have ended, um, and there's a bit of calm going on right now. Yeah. You know who we haven't had a look at all stream. Um, is the Yinnick Empire. I have to see uh, what Amanda is up to as the Yin. How's she doing with the old uh, mission trade? She has a mission available to click. But where that is, I don't... Oh, there we go. Rebuild our city. Um, but it only gives you a event, and I can't read the event without, obviously, her clicking <laughs> it. So, yes. Who knows? Oh, it's about to oh she literally clicked it. Wow. Okay, there we go. Okay. Do Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she gains prosperity and new districts will be built as you acquire subjects and prestige. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, she needs to build up her provinces. Is, is any of these basically, I will unite all of my people? Because mm. I don't know. I'm not quite sure either. Oh, there's another district that just popped up. I think after Siege Imperial, Unify, uh, Unity of Sada. Yeah, there's a lot of seeding going on down there. Yeah. yeah. And it, it looks, looks like, like her vassals well. are able to go to war with one another. Yeah, it's a, it's a Shogun mechanic. Yeah, so Pombasan, obviously, her vassal... Goma Senga, her vassal, and, you know, Pomvason is basically uniting, I guess, all of its disparate bits. Um, but interestingly, while obviously Amanda is the Yinnick Empire, she controls all of this, she does have a player as her vassal, well, in Brailar. I believe oh. Brailar uh, recently got a mission tree as well. Looking at it, the, um, 
Liberty Desire is going down. I mean, it's still not in a healthy position, but the Liberty Desire is looking better. Yeah, there's. it's not permanently everyone at 100. So yeah. that is definitely some element of change there. Ah, she took influence ideas out of that. That's going to be a big part of it. Yeah. Um, is there any more you can squeeze out? Liberty Desire from development. That's not the main thing. And then typical the annexation thing. cost would be nice. Relative army power is a big one. It's a calf nation then, because she in her um, now nah, traditions she has twenty percent cheaper calf cost. Um, um and then there's some calf combat ability in the ideas. I think it's one of those nations like we were talking about before where it's maybe worth sprinkling some cavalry in, but it's not yeah. a it's not a full blown calf. You know what? I don't know who we should ask about this. I think at some point we should ask somebody about um, the idea of having navigable rivers in Anbana. Yeah. Because there is, a, I think at one point in vanilla Anbana, um, the river that goes into Sarian, not Sarian, Sarisung, was navigable. And it's certainly like, it's impassable right now. And I really like impassable rivers. Not necessarily ne needed to be navigable by boats. But I think there maybe should be more rivers in the mod that are impassable. Um, like the Surin yeah. River in Bulwar. I think the the um, the River Allen that goes into like Vertesk. These are like really important rivers in various like mission trees and. Rivers are, I think, are an underutilized element of E4 in general. I think I'd like to see more. Yeah, same, same. I think it's something I'll have to come along with vanilla, but you'll never see it. It's, um... Like, for example, Viswall, right? Like, according to the law, Viswall, which apparently is united now, right? um, was all the bridges were torn down, right? Yeah. You can't really simulate that. When yeah, they can just walk through, but... Walk across. If you have that river be impassable terrain with a um, with a straight crossing over it, yeah, I think that'd be that'd work really nicely, and kind of just increases the amount of like strategic placement that you can do with your your forts, for example. Yeah, and also uh, facilitates natural borders too yeah. during this time, right? Uh, there is a war going on. Uh, the elephant lords are at war with Syadan. Okay, let's have a look. How many modifiers do the Elephant Lord have? Uh, at the moment, he's at 35% or... Cav Combat Ability, which, like, we're only 40 years into the game. Sorry, 30 years into the game. So, yeah. that's fine. The fact is, he also has a 6 Shock General, which I think is a little bit wild. It's a Tribal Allegiance at? Uh, quite far away. Um, oh, this is going to be quite a tough war to call, actually. Uh, it would be, but the fact also is that he's not moving. Uh, could this be a case of we're at war, but I'm not actually going to fight you? I think they will be. Oh, God, they got Shadow Dreamer on their side, too, don't they? Shadow Dreamer yeah. is deceptively powerful. Um, there we are, 26 uh, units there. Got a bigger army than Surita. And they've got the gold province to bank for it. Yeah. No, I think yeah, I think the elephants are going to have a really tough time here. They're outnumbered quite, quite a lot. That might be why he's not coming. Or, well, he's he's marching over now, actually. Yeah. I don't think he'll win a battle, though. I think he'll beat them. Uh, and Shadow Dreamer is actually marching up. Ooh. Uh, I got a big freeze. Am I crashing? Or... Nope, we're good. Cider Conquest Ketan is good. Tedum. Where is Tedum? Tedum's been pieced out. What's going on here? I have no idea. Where? Who is Tedum? Uh, Tedum is like this little, uh, it's a tiny little province uh, that Sidon's got a permanent claim on. Uh -huh. Was it actually that? Yeah, he's at war with um, 
the ruler of the Raj, potentially? Yeah, he is. Okay. He's at war with Denir Rahan Raj, uh, who is basically like the the leader of like a the, the Raj Federation. That might be how um, he was called in. Because he is a, probably a Prabi? Something along those lines. The, yeah, we, we unfortunately can't see the Raj mechanics without being the country. We can't click the button. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice if E4 had a better modding capacity to add more things down the bottom. Yeah. Uh, like the mandate, like adding a custom thing you can click on globally. Oh, hang on. Here is Jay's opinion on navigable rivers from a suggestion on the Discord. This isn't CK3. Why would that matter? There, there, there's no bloody boats. <laughs> and we shouldn't try to accommodate that stuff. The principal purpose of that was for Vikings, and we aren't in that age anymore. Other people have brought up some good counterpoints, but the prevailing philosophy is we'll do it if and when Vanilla does it. Yeah. I don't I, even I, think it should be navigable. Just yeah, more I mean, blockers I, for armies. I think, yeah. I don't think having boats going up and down rivers is good. I don't, I don't like that in general. A, yeah. because, like, uh, fiddling around with trade stuff with, uh, and fiddling around with boats is actually stupid. Yeah. Also, it's really stupid. Like, a man at war did not go up boats. <laughs> like, it generally didn't happen. Like, it would sail... Like, for example, a man of war could sail into the, like, the mouth of the Thames, and, but it wouldn't go up to... Up to yeah. Sea, right? Um, Unless you tear down all the bridges and do a bit exactly. of dredging and... Yeah, so I, I'm inclined to agree there. And, but yeah, you're right. I think um, rougher terrain is probably a good shout. War is over. Yeah, Ma Ma but it is one you? for Vanilla too. Mal Delacan um, has actually taken the Raj. They are the, the Raj leader. Um, they have Denison Ja. Um... So, as I was saying, there is... Yeah, du Durin's in for a rough battle, yeah. Over Amaldir. Durin Blue Shield versus, um, versus Azra Expedition. He's a goner. He's a goner. Oh, maybe, maybe not. not. Okay, uh, maybe I... Uh, the General is definitely on Azra's side. Nah, I think Durin's no, lost. Gone. Yeah, yeah it's gone. Oh, it's that. It's a hold. Fighting on holds. Yeah. It's a rough one. So, we've got. Even, like, Azra. just numbers wise, Azra is well ahead. And they have cannons, whereas Company of Blur, uh, Durham Blue Shield does not. The thing is, Azra's coming in for the, uh, for the counter attack. Now, I think that might be unwise, because if he fights on their hold, Durham can um, regroup and actually. Maybe. So extra 5k incoming. Uh, but you, you have to do something. You can't just like stare at each other across the way. Well, I think if Durian mercs up. Dead <laughs> Durian. Uh, <laughs> Durian. Durian, I should say. It's not like a foul smelling fruit. Um, Durian Blue Shield next? has awful economy. Um, yes. Nine ducats income. Their balance is less than a ducat. Whereas, oh, Azra's worse, though. Well, Azra, Azra's losing Azra, 12 ducats a month. Well, that's mainly because he's taken Amaldir, right? Uh, he's not Cord. Yeah. Um, that, that maintenance, the state maintenance, is... Uh, look, there. He has got a bank of 1,300 and no loans, though. Um, whereas Durin has a bank of 500, also no loans. And neither of them can have any estates, so they can't take uh, burger loans. How are they doing on Adventure Unity? Um, that counts for a lot. Durin is 56, and Azra is fully 100. Okay. I think that's income that doesn't actually get shown in the economy screen. Uh, is that's what twenty seven ducats yearly tax income? No, it comes in through the taxation. I'm pretty sure. Um, so he's still losing money with that. Yeah. 
It's because of the Amaldea thing. He's taken Amaldea. Um... No, he didn't pay any state maintenance. Oh, he's just taking some more loans. Oh, he's building more units. So. Yeah. 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 Ooh, look at Azra's. Uh... Okay, from Azra's perspective, cannot see uh, Julian's province. So but you, you will be able to see an X or the crossed swords when Durin comes in. Yeah, but if you're that player, you don't know how many that person's got, so you're going to yeah. panic. So Durin, obviously he doesn't know that, though. Or maybe he knows that, but probably doesn't know that. Now, Durin knows that they can't be reinforced. Um, for some reason, Durin is building normal troops. I think it should be buying Merc. Oh, the local defensiveness on. What is the siege ticks? The siege ticks are 64. So he has got time. He has, yeah. As soon as the, uh, he's got his morale, I think he's going in. Fact, he's got his is, morale are there... There's all, the reason he hasn't got any more mercs is because there are none. Yeah. He's, he's only got, got one potential team. merc company and he's already hired. And I think that's probably the same deal for Azra. Yeah. There's only one merc company. So Thanks. basically, it's a race to see how many men you can build, and they've all, both only got a single province to do it in. I think if Jura goes in now, I think he has a pretty good chance. Uh, he has a better chance than waiting because Azra can build troops fast enough. Oh, there yeah. he is. Here he comes. Here you guys. And can Azra see the? Ex oh, Azra can't see the cross swords. Oh yeah. So okay. the shock da uh, the shock bonus is completely nullified by the terrain. Um, there's a slight morale advantage for um, Azra and also 10% infantry combat ability. Which is probably what is going to swing this. That general is just too good. Yeah, and the, the little cannons putting their weight behind them a bit. Who has the most yeah. manpower, I wonder? That's it. I think uh, old Durian is, uh, is out for the count. He could have sortied there. Maybe that yeah, could have swung it. That could have maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah. No, Durian's definitely lost because he's retreating into the Dwarven yeah. roads that are uncolonized and probably going to suffer from uh, when he walks back. Yeah, and that's just got more uh, people coming in. He's feel trying to feel more formations, but... They honest, build too uh, slowly. They build too slowly. Why are dwarves killing dwarves? Because they both want the the seat of dwarven power. Yeah. Amaldir is by far the best uh, in that area. I mean, it's a state that has... Is it four, four. or three holds? Four. Yeah, four holds. It's... It's, uh, it's an end node, trade-wise. Yeah. Um... It's incredibly very, wealthy. Very it's like it's not the best tag to form Amaldir, but it's it is what you yeah. want as your capital. Obviously, you have your um, governing um, cost is lower in your capital region, and well, as far as, like, holds tag... give you a lot of you know uh, governing cost. You know, it's a good tag um, for permaclaims. Not particularly interesting. I would give it mm. that. Yeah, it's a, it's a block tag. When you have a chance, read the national idea named Greatest Elven Empire or something in the Yinnick Empire. Let's uh, quickly have a scan over and check that then. Greatest Elven Empire. Is it the first Elven Empire? National idea one. The world beyond the cliffs with its many so-called revelations has confirmed something which we have long suspected, that we are the oldest and greatest empire built by the elves of this era. If there are any empires before the Flood, all memory of them is gone along with the old decadent world. After the Flood, the other surviving elves across Aelantia rebuilt their nations, only to see them devolve into mob rule, squabbling megocracies, or outright anarchy. The day the Yinnick rose, the elves of the Remnant fleet were still stranded at sea, the day the Yinnick Empire fell, the empire built by the strongest of the Sun Elves, Jehur, had already turned to ashes. If our eastern kin wants to posture themselves as elven reclaimers and bringers of civilization, they'll be sorely disappointed to find an empire that was built by the elves who never fled Aelantir like they did. That's cool. Yeah. I, I do... I, the writing in this mod is amazing, and 
the writing in Amanda's mission trees also usually just like so on point. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Oh, did I miss another dwarven battle? I think I did. I'd love to get a writer on too. I I, I really want to pluck their brains about like uh comic Yeah. Games. Um <laughs> do we want to find the writer for uh the dwarves? Uh yeah, anyone's fine, I guess. Oh, we have somebody who wants to join to talk about navigable rivers. Oh, okay, interesting. Let's let's get uh Hoya into the uh here we go. Hello there, navigable Hello. river fan, hopefully. Hello. <laughs> or a foe, um, a so foe yes. of a river or friend of a river. <laughs> uh firstly, uh who are you? What you what do you do in Anbana and who are you playing? Uh, hi, I'm Hoya. I'm a writer and also, in theory, region lead for Insia when that actually resumes development. <laughs> um, nice. it, we're waiting on Sarhal coming out because there's a bunch of province modifier, modification happening and wanting the province map in EU falls a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, I'm also, uh, as I said, I'm a long-time writer. I'd say probably my largest project in the mod that you know me best for is I did pretty much all the localization for the Phoenix Empire mission tree. Oh, very ah, nice. Cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I am a fan of navigable rivers in certain circumstances. Oh, yeah. Oh, I... oh and sorry, in the in the game I'm playing uh, Arakaprun. Very nice. Potential for opening the portal and ruining Sirenvar's day then later. Well, no, I'm on Sirenvar's team. Oh, I Oh, see. well... Cancel well, that, then gonna... opening the portal to aid your Sirenvari <laughs> ally. <laughs> well, also, Sirenvar can open the portal now in this build, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Way earlier than I can, in fact. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Uh, very nice. So yeah, talk to me about navigable rivers, or, like, what we were saying was maybe not have them navigable by boats, but having them as, um... Bits of terrain that obviously are like uh, impassable, um, but for certain circumstances. Uh, style? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm talking navigable by boats, and it's already on the map if you want to navigate over to Insia. Oh, in Insia, you said? Oh, Rose, I see. Okay, this cool. version of the mod has the uh, reworked Insia geography. Right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I No, that's the sort of navigable river I, I would approve of. Like, it's, it's, it's really a massive mouth of a river, right? So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's well, fine. two rivers, but... That's fine. That's, that's like the Amazon base. Yeah, oh, can, yeah. We, we, can, we can deal with this. Yeah, yeah. These are some fat and chunky rivers, though. No, when I hear navigable rivers, I think, like, going up the Rhine, and I don't like that. Mm. Uh, also, if you want to see something fun with Incia, yeah. uh, as long as I can talk to people about it, because, ooh, I love this continent. Uh, if you free. navigate, if you navigate over to the western coastline of the continent, uh, just east of the, um, in the big sort of valley area surrounded by all the mountains, yeah, uh, and you look at the west coast, you might notice the tree maps a little fucked up. That intentional. Those are mangroves. Oh, very that's cool. Cool. Um. Incia's big theme to uh, differentiate it from the rest of Ambanar is uh, megafauna and megaflora. Right. I noticed there's some uh, trees in the river. I don't know if those are mangroves or if it's a bug. That's those are mangroves. Swamp oh, plants. Oh, there we are. That's is this is this where a um a straight crossing will be as well? Maybe hopping across um, mangroves. I will clarify. I'm on Australian internet. I'm not directly looking at your stream. No worries. Um, but um, yeah, the the mangrove, uh, which is in the uh, easternmost river, uh, there's a patch of mangroves um, further down the river. Uh, maybe yes. that could be where a straight crossing is. Hop over some mangroves. Yes. Now, I want you to keep in mind anything I do say about Yin, not Yin, I think, can you tell it's, it's 2 a.m. for me? Um, <laughs> it's not set in stone. Yeah. Please. Nothing is set in stone. Uh, but I can tell you, well, some things are set in stone, including kaiju. Okay, cool. Like Mofra is going to be. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, copyright free Mothra, but yeah. Not naturally, naturally. Mothron. <laughs> <laughs> Big ass bugs and yeah. things. <laughs> monsters. And yeah, the uh, the continent itself is going to be heavily based on uh, a mix of uh, Polynesia, Melanesia, Australia, and um, pre-Columbian settled regions of America, that being uh, Mesoamerica and the Andes. Oh, the Australian influence is mega flora and flora that want to kill you, I would assume. Uh no, actually, we're going to have a culture very, very, or I should say cultures, uh, very heavily based on the First Nations peoples of Australia. Oh, very cool. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, specifically in the lowlands east of those mangroves. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, there's no Bogan nation, then. No, 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 no. Oh, that well, comes, that's, that's for that Vicky. That comes later. <laughs> that's Vicky. <laughs> Bogan nation. That, good, that's, good. that's when the... Uh... Eberthil goes and colonizes it. Uh, well, I can I can tell you what I intend to be the canon fate of um, the Australia esque region in Vicky, but that requires me telling you a little bit more about the continent. If you want to hear Hoya ramble about sure, Insula yeah, that's yet to be ahead. set, look, let, let, this let is loose. this is exclusive, like not seen before uh, content so sure oh no all, yeah. all everything i'm telling you is in publicly available no Lodox. it's 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 now exclusive yeah, it just let me have yeah. this <laughs> and but it has an open development yeah i mean yeah no but yeah feel free let us know um okay so for context uh Incia is yet another place that the elves completely fucked up mm -hmm. um as they are wont to do uh Incia was basically, uh, during the height of the war between uh, the Precursor Empire and Old Orav, uh, Incia was the, uh, the Precursor Empire's testing ground for their super weapons, essentially. Oh. That basically where the mega... Uh, Fauna is the animals one, isn't it? Where the Meg Mothra, is that where Mothra came from? Yes. Uh, the, the kaiju of the continent, which are called Holohana... <laughs> Uh, okay. were specifically <laughs> bioengineered as siege weapons to deal with surface holds. Being being a testing ground for uh, super weapons is very on theme for Oceania and Australia too. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, now this failed when they realized, oh fuck, if we take the uh, if we take these holohana to anywhere that doesn't have uh, a megafauna, megaflora ecosystem. It will literally kill everything by destroying the entire food chain. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and although that might have been something that uh, Duke Anil would have been cool with, he wasn't the one heading the project. Wait, there's something in Ambanar that's gone fucked up that wasn't his fault? No, this well, this was uh, other first. elves. <laughs> um, other projects of theirs included uh, the Mechanim. Ah, like, uh, Warforged. Yes. Lovely. Uh, Mechanim are the second race on Insia. Whether there are other races is still up in the air. I'm actively negotiating with Jay about it. Um, uh, don't put that in the edit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> are they, uh, are they humans there, or? Yes, there are humans. Um, the confirmed races on Incia that, like, no one's disagreed with me are humans, mechanim, and dragon turtles. Okay, I'm sold. Okay, no, I'm sold. Cool. Yeah. Like uh, dragon turtles are not, not to be present in the racial system, but they have a significant enough impact on Incia's history to be worth mentioning as a race. There's only, like, 20 of them alive. Okay. okay. Are they, are they uh, humanoid turtles? Is that the gist of them? Or? No, uh, l look up dragon turtles. They're in D&D. Uh, you'll get a gist of what they look I like. I am looking it up now. I know it's like, uh, you know, humanoid turtles. And yeah, oh, those I are yeah. portals. Oh, okay. Tortles. Oh, they big! Yeah, they big. They, oh, they very cool. big. I mean, some have got, like, uh, little island homes, like like in that Mists of Pandaria expansion. Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, cool. I'll show my chat what I'm looking at here. That's cool. I like, I like turtle islands. They're always nice. Uh, they're, they're not specifically islands. They tend to hang out on lakes by 1444. The big thing about uh, 
dragon turtles is um they're immortal yeah. in that they won't die of old age you can definitely like stab one yeah. but if you've uh, got a death but, wish but the unique thing about a dragon turtle they can't breathe fire they can't swim too far they certainly can't fly their memories are flawless uh -huh. uh, that sounds like curse and a half isn't it? <laughs> yes but it also means that for uh the peoples of canoroele which is the uh, northern island chain off the Indian coast vaguely based on a mix of um hawaii and mesoamerica uh -huh. yeah um uh, i'm not gonna lie i'm i've been playing fatian recently i'm looking at all these islands going oh i can island hop over my <laughs> oh, you won't. uh i'll tell you about the kia moa in a moment because that's another fun lore bit um, uh, but let's just say it won't be that easy. Um, oh, is it, is it going to be uncolonized provinces? Cause I feel like that's a big, oh yeah, there's going to be uncolonized provinces, right. but, uh, I love the region of debug area. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, man. You may be wondering, uh, well, what's the point of all the high temples? You may be wondering what the fuck those exist for. Yeah. We were just talking to four about it. It's something about his spirits. At... The, the rending. Yeah, the ignore that. Um, I'm going to tell you why they were built in the first place. Oh, oh, juicy. Let's go. Yes, I, I wish to know or this. Or at least partially. You see, Ambanar has multiple planes, as you know. We have the Fey Realm, we have the Spirit Realm, we have the Material Realm. Yeah. And the Spirit Realm is fucking chockers with magic energy. Of course. Uh, mm. So the High Temples exist to siphon that energy off. Right. So and breaking those wondering, open, bad idea. You may be wondering, what are they siphoning off that energy for? As a guess, um, is it to keep the uh, kaiju in check? It's to keep Insia in check. It's, uh, it's actually to uh, buff up precursor relics for artificial <laughs> capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Kiamoa is a magic storm that encircles Insia permanently and has done so for 6,000 years by 1444. Okay. It is not just any storm, but it is full of abjuration and evocation magic. Sailing through it is, practically speaking, a death wish. Okay. Um... It's going to be represented in game by uh, wastelands, quite similar to the uh, Cliffs of Ruin over in Elantir. Okay. Like uh, but in the middle of the ocean. Wastelands? Uh, no, the the you can make a uh, a province that is a land province, but I just have it be it yeah. ocean on the height map. Right. Um. And. Uh, there's also going to be a few provinces scattered around it that, when Insia opens up, turn into canals to allow access to and from the continent. Right. Okay. Good idea. But that's not intended to happen in gameplay till around the 1650s. Okay. It's like, um, it's like Albion. Mists of Albion. Stuff. Is there a worry that, or has it been thought of then, about when you have the nations on Insia, that they're, uh, they basically not have any interaction with the rest of the world until this 1650, you know, barrier opens. Uh, and maybe that would not play entirely so well in multiplayer. Having yes, places there being... has. Okay. Um, I should, first of all, 1650 is what happens with, like, no outside intervention. If there's no player intervention, uh, Insia will open up in the 1650s. Okay. There will be ways for players to influence it. Okay. I can't Next say up. how, but there there are ways. Because there's, uh, there's two nations in Yanshen, uh, colonial ambitions, right? Uh, mm. Which also have mission trees about that area. And if, yes. if, it's, uh, if it's a case of hopping to Amaldia and coming back, it feels a bit weird. You may also uh, wonder, um, there's, there's actually already a culture for Yan in Insia. Uh, for Eastern Yan. Yeah. That's a thing. Okay, that's cool. 
Uh, uh, but yes, there will be ways that you can open Insia early, uh, both inside and outside of Insia. In um, addition... Pretty... Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, when it comes to trades too, like, where would the trades for Insia be going? Um, trade... Fl the general plan, I believe, is for trade to flow from Hales to Insia, and from Insia to Aelantir and to Sarhal. Okay. So Hales getting wrecked again. <laughs> well, not till the 1650s, and if you're... If you're not dominant in trade by the 1650s, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. There's, Playing uh, multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's also that thing in Amber Eyes where, um, with Sahal being introduced, there's a lot of uh, advantage for the, you know, Europeans, quote unquote, to uh, to colonize into Africa and get trade around uh, Sahal. And I quite like that in a in a multiplayer game. Seeing seeing other nations come in to the Far East and Africa and create a dilemma. Living there, mm. right? mm. I can tell you there will be a lot of incentives for non insians to go into Insia. Perfect. Wonderful. That's um, what I like to hear. Yeah. Including, yeah. if I can get away with it, unique artificer privileges. Ooh. Interesting. Father Loris absolutely wringing his hands together right now, the absolute imperialist. He's, he's, <laughs> he's loving the idea of it. Um, like, bring me I my British Empire you, laugh. Yeah. I love it. I, I, I'm wearing my pith helmet right now. <laughs> if, if you want a uh, British Empire laugh in Vicky, at least. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, salvageable. <laughs> um, I can Lambert, tell you the plan Lambert's for the time. Instant response. <laughs> I mean, can you blame me? <laughs> um, could I tell you too? about something else I've been working on. Of course, sure. by all means. Um, before I do, uh, yeah, okay, I think I can tell you all about it. It's getting um, permission from it's, Jay. Yeah, it's, it's, under, <laughs> it's under mod based NDA. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an old hat on the mod. I, um, I joined, um, <laughs> before the Dwaravar was implemented. Oh wow, that's oh, yeah, yeah. that's a good while that's ago. That's when I then. first played it. Yeah, it was uh... my first uh, project on the mod. Actually, legitimately, the first thing I did was I localized the horde curse. Oh, so oh. it's oh, that, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's one really of the good. standout like this is what Anbanar is that you show new people. Yeah, how yeah, so I will mention a lot of my old localization has been replaced over the years. I wasn't that good back then. Oh, it's, I think I, I always like gotta start bit. somewhere. That's um, <laughs> because I like a lot of the old localization. Yeah, Father Lawrence is a big fan of the old stuff. Yeah, like I want to tell you too <laughs> about perhaps the most imperialist tag that's going to be added to Ambanar, even more than the command. Okay. All oh, right. I want to tell you too about a stub in the gnomish hierarchy mission tree. The gnomes, interesting. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you too about Nortiokand. Mm. Nortio, um, is that something that they form, or is that a. Nortiokand is a yet to be added adventurer spawnable. Right. Uh, that is intended to spawn in the Broken Isles. Uh, those are the glacial islands north yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, Aelanth here. With the, uh, with the frog people that are living there? Yeah. Uh, not for long. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Poor little frog people. I, I always wanted a tag about... What are they called? Ice sleepers. That's what they <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you two a few questions in succession, and that's gonna be all I said, say about Nortiokand. Okay. Question one. Do you like Frostpunk? Yes. Frostpunk? I love Frostpunk, yeah. Uh, question two. Uh, what do you think would happen if human sacrifice actually worked? It does in Frostpunk, so, uh, you know. Are we gonna get gnomes and, uh, sacrificing people to, to stay question warm? Question like, three. You know when your, your reactor on Frostpunk is running out of, like, it's overcharged and you throw a child into the generator? Is that basically you doing that with gnomes? Also, ignore me losing a battle to an AI war wizard. Um... <laughs> 
You're just chucking gnomes into the Oh, are you are you fighting Oh no, they they're dead. Um yeah, sorry, So no. Nortiokand is uh Oh yeah, third question. Uh is it morally okay to give the universe cancer? <laughs> what uh yes, sure. I say yes. Um having kids is perfectly reasonable thing to do, yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I led my petrol, so you just uh, really... <laughs> he puts the, the whole lead um, back in. <laughs> <laughs> the whole impetus for uh, North Theokand is they are a gnomish research expedition to the islands north of Elintir, hmm. uh, where they discover something called the Avikarat. Right. Uh, the Avikarat is a machine that uh to their knowledge to anyone's knowledge to my knowledge as a developer uh not only predates uh the f day of ashen skies not only predates the precursor empire it may well predate halam the planet huh okay and how the avikarat works is very simple uh, blood goes in, kinetic energy comes out. It's a train that runs on blood. Blood train. <laughs> more like it's a piston that you plump blood into. I feel like there's there's more efficient ways of running a piston, to be honest. <laughs> you think, except the fact is that there are. How aren't powerful is it, this piston? It's very powerful powerful enough to run entire heated cities on the glaciers with 1500s era technology. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, the fucking cauldron stores have to... Oh, yeah, that, that's actually a, an issue they're going to face, <laughs> which is that um, you're going to face diminishing returns as your network of machinery expands. Yeah, just running on one person. How do the gnomes determine that this Avicara is older than the planet? Um, it's got a little like a uh, plaque on the mate. Thing. mate. <laughs> <laughs> How old is Halan the planet? Actually, is another question. These are things I can't answer at the moment. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I can tell you some things that are going to happen with late game North Theokand, hopefully. Sure. Um, undead army. Okay. But achieved through artifice. Mechanical skeleton. Um, more like Phyrexians. So, I don't know what a Phyrexian is. Yeah, I was uh, I was trying to think, do I know this and would it be embarrassing if I said I didn't? I, I assumed it was fans of Phyrexian games. Uh, magic Gathering. Oh, okay, yeah, I have no idea. I, I, I have no idea, yeah. Uh, Chat does, uh, though. Um, H.R. Geiger. Right. Okay. Um, wow. and, uh, oh yeah, um, the other thing that they do is, uh, yeah, uh, they turn the deep woods into meat. I mean, the if meat it's... Woods. Please and rename it gonna... the meat woods. <laughs> I'm not going to explain why, and I'm not going to explain how. <laughs> well, meat you know... Elna wants to turn it into a battery. It's on, you know, we can change it into meat as well. You know, just change everything into other things. Why not? Meat woods. Meat woods. Mm. Also, but I just yeah, googled what the Phyrexians look like, and goddamn, they look yeah. cool as shit. They're fucking sick. Yeah, um, they are. The big inspiration for Northeokand is um, fundamentally uh, we want an evil artifice nation. They are to artifice what the black domain is to magic, at least thematically. Okay. All right. I like it. Oh, and uh, Enleave has just messaged me on Discord asking if uh, I want to send you Nortiokan's flag, and I'm just going to say yes. Oh, hell yeah. Because we do have a flag for them. Sure. Oh, I just seen EA yeah, sent that in, uh, in, in my chat as well. Yeah, send me that. I can... Show chat as well. Oh, that's a lovely old flag, actually. Yeah, 
cool. Where did you send that? Dev class general. There we go, and I can show that. That's a cool flag. That is a cool flag, yeah, yeah. Black and blue really together nice always look pretty nice. Yeah, it's cool. Love it. Um. So yeah, Nortio and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, and uh, do you you know Aelnaris can fade, right? Don't they become like a a, a rump state, just like a very tiny one province minor or something along those lines? Yeah, you want to guess what happens to Nortio and in canon? Uh, the opposite of that. Um, Nortio Khand consolidates the glaciers. They they get all their armies ready. They're preparing their great uh, project of North Aeland here. And they promptly eat shit and lose to Thamaria. In the most embarrassing way possible. How does that happen? Cog broke. Uh, <laughs> like, it's, it's all attached to this one piston by one axle and it broke <laughs> so everybody... well no that's actually a disaster they're gonna face <laughs> uh, not that exactly but the idea having, that, having uh, a single point of failure in a massive <laughs> I thoroughly look forward to playing as that in Victoria 4 <laughs> <laughs> well be an EU4 okay yeah, that too <laughs> yeah that's um, interesting. I do like artificial. Yeah, I mean, artificiary is something that Anne I added that I've thoroughly enjoyed messing around with. Yeah. To the point where I'm always like, do I want to play this really interesting um, nation or this other really interesting nation that has artificiary, like, from a very early start? And it's, yeah. it's always very tempting to just say, ah, oh, artificers every time. It's something I've been I will like, mention, in a um, saying is, like, mad science. Uh, stuff like I mean, so I love the Skaven, for example. Um, mm. Yeah, really cool. I'm the uh, I I wrote I'd say about a third of the Artificer invention descriptions. Oh, they're really good. And yeah. also, I'm the person responsible for I'd say ninety percent of Discworld references in this mod. Good, good. Legend. Man, I, I tell you what, all the Goblin Artificery stuff, fucking amazing. I yeah. love. Um, I love them. <laughs> You, the, you the want to know for the, uh, the the scrap robots? Beautiful. That wasn't me, but you know what was me? Love that. Uh, the greatest artifice invention in the game, which Black is Dame's exclusive Steer? to Keteratans. Oh. What is that? Uh, one? Now, I, I want you to guess uh, what uh, would be exclusive to Keteratans. Cats. A cat box. Ca I, I have. <laughs> wait. Uh, is it? Is it? Um, no. Basically, Ushabti. Like mechanical ushabti. Uh, no and no. Oh. Mm, uh, pyramids that fly. You get. Oh shit! <laughs> yes, I love it. Uh, it gives an unrest reduction. I uh, love it a little bit less now. <laughs> uh, but... Well, there's a lore reason for it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't give fire pips. No, I'm not using it. <laughs> In fairness, when when you play um, artificers in in a multiplayer you generally don't look at anything but the military benefits that you can get <laughs> basically yeah how much the unrest reduction an unrest reduction uh minus three i think slight uh, slight i mean but at the same time the reasoning is that uh all your citizens are settling their differences through a children's card game rather than getting into fights nice nice <laughs> yeah that is the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh! in fairness Although they didn't settle the well, differences so much as kill each game, other, right? yeah, yeah, swings and roundabouts. It's all good. Um, I should mention that's not the only uh, point that Yu-Gi-Oh appears in the game. Where else? Um, you know, um, Arcatist, one of the new Keteratan religions. Yeah, yeah. And you know the dragon Arketa? I do now. Uh, yeah, the dragon Arketa is the, he's the patron dragon of the cat. He's a bit of a dickhead. Um, Dragons and, tend uh, to be. You can play him. Uh, you can play against him at Yu-Gi-Oh. Nice in game. Okay. Why not? 
<laughs> Why not? <laughs> God, I remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards when I was. Oh, I don't think I ever touched them. Teenager. Uh, Maybe twenty-year-old. Yeah, I I like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it's, cool. It's been a pleasure talking to you all about the uh, stupid bullshit I'm adding to yeah, this one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the region being added. So yeah, for be sure. After Sarhol, I guess. Especially, yeah, because it's like. When you're introducing somebody to Envena, their first question is, oh, what's this whole con... It's not the first question, but it's one of their questions is, there's a whole continent here with nothing on it. What's going on? And now I have an answer. So, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Oh, and um, one other thing I will mention about uh, Insia that I, I'll be real, it kind of... Uh, it's very deliberate on my part because I want to piss people off uh, <laughs> okay. a certain type of person, which is that um, the mechanism, they're robots, right? Yeah. They're mechanical. Yeah. Why the fuck would they have genders? Because they want them. They don't even know what it is. Are they, uh, uh, so are a... they, are they mechanism genderless or are they... Do they have? Uh... <laughs> uh, did you ever play Starbound? Uh, well, uh, I've never played this Starbound. Is a this is a very okay. It's completely. I've changed the topic a little bit. From what there was um. a <laughs> there was a great little um, uh, there was a there was a faction of robots called the Glitch. So we were like medievalist robot, which is a really fun little concept. Yeah. And uh, when picking like uh, you pick like sex rather than gender, I guess. In, in that, but um. It was, a, it was basically, what type of plug did you have? Oh, no. <laughs> it was, it was, which I always thought was very funny. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the way mechanism are in game is um, every mechanism that is not a gender, hmm. as in a gender being lack of gender, yeah, uh, is explicitly trans if they're not a gender. Okay, That's fair enough. And I'm all all in favor of uh, pissing people off, so that's that works for me. Yeah. But yeah, I guess good comment from chat here as well. It would depend on how the robots came to be. If organics made them, then they may well emulate um, nah, their it's, creators. It's, it's all about plug type. That's what it is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were made by. Did you use organics? leaded or unleaded fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, these for fuckers two, are powered by James. Yeah. <laughs> two genders, petrol or diesel. Um, <laughs> um, is there any? They were made by organics, but they do not remember that. Right. <sighs> is there any uh, Kionai lore related to Insia? Um. I mean, maybe someone was sent to the Kianai prisons for the crimes against humanity they committed there. Work. But uh... aside from that, no, not really. Okay. I, I'd imagine that any Chaos mission tree would probably have you going into NCS since Chaos, I believe, is meant to be a colonial tag. Yeah, the all trade. I mean, unless trade obviously gets reworked heavily. Um... Maybe we could see a trade uh, lane going from Insia into Kianai, eventually. I believe the three trade links for Insia are going to be towards um, Sarnamadfar, hmm. uh, towards Lower Haraf, and towards Tornai. Okay. Okay. I Is believe. It... So Kianai get Tiamlo. fucked. But that's heavily TBD. Keep in mind. Yeah. Gotta get Sarhal out the door to... first. Yeah. A yeah. Anything was, uh... on Insia Beyond Lore is incredibly TBD. And Fair. even then. Even. Well, um, so but there then... will be navigable rivers. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And also try and twist uh, Jay's arm to have at least province, like, uh, blocking rivers. That you have to cross over with bridges, uh, you know, uh, straight crossings described, uh, disguised as bridges. That would be great. Oh, um, I can tell you one other thing that's going to be there. It isn't anywhere else in the mod. It's so unique. You'll never believe it. 
Go for it. Uh, a big mountain range that is actual mountain provinces. Oh. As opposed to tunnels or just a wasteland. That works. I mean, I Let's... suppose... Wait, if, you're, if you've got um, these giant beasts wandering around, you know, a mountain isn't going to be a wasteland so much as a, a steep hill to them. So... Mm. <laughs> Astra Exhibition has got four hold restorations. Hasn't even gone into bed. That's really quite impressive. I guess that's the power of doing it. I think they Astra Expedition has set themselves up to be a pretty much a the dominating force in this earth. Oh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, hi. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, for joining us and explaining Insia to us. I uh, yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Is there any? I mean, there's a lot I couldn't get to, but. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that is. I think Sweet, that's sure. and Benar in a nutshell. There's so much; it's so deep that it's kind of impossible to get everything in in one go. Of course, of course. Um, good luck with Arakiprun. And uh, is there anything final you want to um, shout out or tell chat to go uh, and check out? Yeah. Um. Hey, chat. Uh, justice for the lower set. Uh, gone but not forgotten. I don't know who that is. That's a reference to something which I don't understand. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Fair uh, enough. We'll there was a time again, for sure. There was a time I almost got in here to have ant people. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. We I think we heard about that last week a little bit. Um, yeah, they've yeah. Been cut. SMH. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Have a great night and uh, tell Findeth I said hi next week because they won't stop bothering me about Mechanim. <laughs> <All right, geez. laughs> Will do. Okay. Bye-bye. Nice. That was lovely. So, like, how's, the, how's the world situation looking? Uh, well, as you said, Azra Expedition has definitively won the contest for the Northern Dwarva. Yeah. Um, that is... The Basically, are pretty much the most strongest power of the game by a long shot. Oh yes, by far. And I assume they're also the great power. Yeah, yeah. On top with uh, great power by only about a hundred, less than a hundred. Yeah, less than a hundred. Uh, yeah. Other players there: Bian Fang, Rakaz, Zelikal, uh, and Sarian. There, not doing too bad. Yeah. Wait a minute. I just. I just had the player map mode on, uh, looking at um, the Elephant Lords, and there's one OPM? No. Three three province minor, currently being sieged, um, Pasiraga, in the Raj. Uh, I don't know, I think he... Uh, <laughs> Manny may be wanting to uh, reseed relatively soon. He's about <laughs> yes. to die. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Bianfang's having a, a really, really good game um, yeah. going up into the uh, Azjakuma Hills, uh, the Demon Hills. Uh, Baked Gang is no contest to him. Basically, all of Northern uh, Yanchen is his for the taking. Is, but basically, yeah, I think he's probably just waiting for the perma claims to, yeah. to make it cheaper. Could also be a case of governing cost. Yeah, his governing oh, capacity, yeah. he's only eight below it. And it's right. really rough if you go over. That's right. I was actually um, also uh, casting the uh, multiplayer game uh, that I host as well on Thursdays. And the Iraqi Pun player um, basically he formed Eodand, conquered most of Northern Ireland here. And he said to me to look at his uh, governing capacity. Uh, and he was, I think, 1500 over. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> He it's... can't take anything. I can you even yeah. just sat there. Like well, he didn't realise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sneaks up on you. Yeah. To be honest, there should be a warning at the top of the screen. Like you are. Yeah, it's surprising your... that there isn't. Uh, so Biafeng is basically waiting on Tech Eight now for the uh, the increase, hundred increase in governing capacity, and uh, yeah, the, what are they called? Courthouses, I want to say. Courthouse, uh, yeah. Courthouse, courthouse yeah. Honestly, it sounded like you said whorehouse. I'm like, I don't think. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. It's a really good feeling, governing capacity. Man. 
<laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> in the mountain range where Verkal Osvar is, check out the Harpy Tag in the Western Pass. Uh, right here, Poo Wichan. Yeah, there is a new Harpy Tag. Is this... This isn't the Harpy Tag from the Zia. This is just entirely new. Uh, Vassal of Bian Fang. It's actually a really good idea to have a Harpy as a vassal holding a pass, considering they have um, defensiveness on, like, roosts, right? Do they have any extra defensiveness yeah, from here? Yeah. Uh, if we get extra attrition for enemies as well. And is it a roost province? It is, yeah. So, tons of defensiveness, although Harpy military giving a minus 50 is a bit wild. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, I suppose for a vassal, they're not actually playing, right? So, yeah. Yes. Plus 20, sorry, yeah, plus 20 garrison size. Um, got some nice um, national ideas. Mountain ravens. Very cool. No MT, but I don't need it. You know what I would like to see? The ability for you, say, if you are, if you're Banfang in this situation, if you could click on your vassal screen and say there was a button here that would increase Liberty Desire, but would allow you choose their ideas. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Because <laughs> in this case, if I've got a vassal that I want to be a, you know, a blocker, this, this is my fort vassal. Yeah. I, I want him to choose defensive ideas. Oh, yeah, admin. Absolutely. I would love that so much. Same thing, like, um, if you vassalize <laughs> Albania in, in vanilla. control their state policies. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're using advancement effort. Great. Well done. I mean... <laughs> they're gaining renaissance at, like... I would definitely love to be able to change three. that. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that could be a really cool thing. I, I just come up with, like, ideas for what I'd want to see in EU4, and it's, it's not something that's ever gonna be a thing but you know it's nice to think about sometimes yeah i, I struggle to think of this too mm. oh gawed is going down red scale um silver forge istralor moonhaven Ooh, Bizwall. Even, even worse Coronta is having issues are they what how yeah oh they are who are they fighting cobalt company ain't no way that they're struggling this hard with Cobalt Company. Are they just ignoring their lands and they're just getting, uh, yeah, they're just ignoring their own. Strange. I guess they're just trying to rush capitals and, and win quick. Because they have already sieged uh, Iron Hammer's capital. If they get these yeah. two capitals, that's that they're, they've won the war, basically. They, yeah, if they get Santa Tamaria, right? But it's strange that they haven't called in the small fellows, so that small fellows can take the land that they have bordering. Yeah, yeah it's rather odd. Uh, okay, so it's kind of working out for them. It just looks a lot scarier, but yeah, I think so. But yeah, Gawed going down is going to be a huge thing because then it's a rush to see who can lap up the spoils, right? Who can get the biggest piece yeah. of the pie? Um. Well, and they're all in the individual wars interests. as well. Yeah, yeah, this is just a just an absolute forging on but, Though I will say, Red Scale is uh, is losing. <laughs> I think, you know uh This wall might get enough provinces, that's like so they need to have uh, uh twelve uh, provinces in the area. So that's one, two There's only 10 uh, yeah. that Gawed has. Okay. Well, if they can get 12 before the uh, disaster fires for Laurent, then they get all the... Or they can just release province. Once you form a poor country, releasing um, halflings uh, makes it so the halflings join you and yeah. you don't have to call them. But it's free. Bit like the, it's the, the Dutch mechanic, isn't it? It is the Dutch Basically, yeah. Form an evolution and everyone joins. I'm we'll not quite see. sure if the disaster has to trigger first, though. Maybe it does. I don't know. Or could just attack. 
but it's worth doing it anyway. Dude. Getting right, getting around for FK free, even if you have to wait I'm for a while. Dying for a cup of tea, so I need to get, I'll be back yeah, not in a problem. Like five minutes. Uh, is Goward a player? No, they are not. Seeding like Goward and Laurent is just a real bad idea in a multiplayer, even though this is like a it's to show off the mod. Um, it's it's not like a super competitive thing. It's still it's still nice to have the ability to, to play without worry that somebody's gonna take it competitively. Right, Sel Maldol, was they want that that is a player. Have they joined the Adshaws? Oh. Sel Maldor. Whose war have you joined? Istralor's war. So they're currently getting wrecked. Um But Gawed Gawed's gonna die. Eh, they're not really getting wrecked. These are it's only three provinces. They're just big, so it looks scarier than it is. Uh, so yeah, Viswal is going to come out on top. I am. I, I feel like I am rooting for Viswal. I I uh, yeah, I'm rooting for Viswal. I like them. I'll be able to uh, take back their lands. Look at Korintar. Oh no. Oh no. It's it's not looking hot. I mean, I guess none of these are forts, though, right? So it is just, like, a siege race? Maybe? But it is it is looking rough. Maybe maybe some more forts would have been nice to have, because that doesn't look super nice. Yeah. Um... I will say as well, when this multiplayer ends in about 20 minutes, uh, I'm going to be immediately jumping in to another multiplayer, so the stream won't end, and I'm going to be playing in the Lord of the Rings mod. So when this one ends, stick around. There's, there's more. More to come. All right, he's got one of the sieges. Can he get the other one? At this point, honestly, you'd, you'd click this button. You would definitely be clicking this button right now. Because, uh... If this 49% fails, then you click the button. There's one pieced out. Iron Hammers and Sons of Demeria. And Sons of Demeria is about to be pieced out. Yeah, because now you've got Sons of Demeria at 100%. You get rid of them... And then you're winning against Iron Hammers. You can just come back. And how many men have they got? 12,000 still? Gonna be fine. They can't desiege this. There's no real sieges here. It's all... I mean, it's, it's still bad. You don't want to have your entire country devastated. Um, but still. He's gonna be fine. Uh, it's for EU4 booster. Welcome back. So, basically all of Korintar got sieged, other than the forts, and then they've pieced out Cobalt Company and Sons of Demeria. Okay. So it was rough. Maybe, maybe just wanting Iron Hammer stuff. It. Yeah, looks like it. I imagine they've probably got, um, like, war reps. Yeah, they got war reps from both of them. I mean, the only bit that causes problems from devastation-wise is... Um... Is Castle because you need to get them zero devastation before you start negotiation. Well, his capital's at ten, but it's got a fort, so it should be coming down. Yeah, it is. Hmm. But he's about to get Iron Hammers to one hundred percent, so it will be all over. It's just uh, maybe, maybe some more forts wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah, uh, it could be a common because. Too, oh, yeah. Um, are they still a tribe? Yes, they still got the tribal stuff, so... They can't actually build a fort. What can they? They can. You're right. Yeah, they can build forts. They've got no estates, though. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's it's that. admin tech seven, which if they had the admin right now, they could take. Um, and then they'll be able to form their tag, which is. Quarantine. Uh, what... <laughs> oh, just quarantine. Reform the Corinta, yeah. Or they could do Vroar and March. No, no, no. I think they'll stick to Corinta, given the flag and the unit model. It'd be Castellier. Yeah, Castellier's got a bit bare bones, but um, I think oh. the plan is to rework those. Check, check out Corinta's inflation. That's uh, that's that's pretty spicy. Ooh, boy, where's that coming from? Uh, I mean, does have a gold province somewhere? Yeah. Where's his gold? Dev tents doesn't seem bad. Arrow field. Uh, all right. So, I mean, there's got to be more to it than that. Obviously, it must be like taking loans, uh, taking money from. Enemies, that kind of thing. Yeah, he's even powering through the... Uh... Oh, I'll tell you what, though. You can only take two provinces from Iron Hammers here. Mm. And he did. Oh, he took the, the correct ones, got him surrounded. I don't know, I, I think I probably would have tried to take the fort, or an Ford. So you got that White Walls of Castanor. Ah, uh, you're right. And also, uh, there's the other bit of Severed Year that you can get. Yeah. How do you, how's the colonies looking? Has he got many? Just the one colonists. Which is going to cockblock the um, wood elves. And do you reckon the wood elves would want to come out? Um, What's a often... massive target on your back? It does, but... You also annoy a player, so, you know... For sure. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, they can't do it anyway, because there's a uh, one way choice. Ah, he left Venikvord so the Iron Hammers could colonize Regalham for him. Ah. Uh, it's a very... Clever. Yeah, yeah. Interesting uh, justification. Yeah, I mean, it could work for him. Yeah, and by the time the two sends with seven year, pop of the colony hunter's folly. So, the thing with Gawed, at the moment, nobody's really getting anything, right? Having four separate wars, great, because you can all take max. Yeah. But also not really, because score, they're yeah. taking each other's war score. The also, one that's winning the most at the moment is Red Scale. They got 31%. Yeah, but the Red Scale can't take the land that wants, really. Yeah. And what would Red, Red Scale can take a bit of land down where uh, Port Nam used to exist. Port Nam became. Port Nam is basically dying. Like, if um, Gawed tried to separate piece Port Nam right now, they could. Yeah. How is the lake fed doing? Isolated and irrelevant, as per. Um, <laughs> Until they... I don't know, because yeah, it, it's it's very difficult to actually see what kind of situation they're in while being a uh, observer. At some point, we will see them just like gobble up everything here for free, and that's when we'll know what situation they're in. Um, but right now, they are just they're just lake fedding over there. Yeah. At some point, they'll turn blue and get to the great powers. <laughs> yeah, and they'll have a name that's hard to pronounce. Yeah, yeah. Flongle Dart. Something. Flongle Dart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some incomprehensible shit. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like a small country, visual, I should say, for the time being, can't get their land they control. Because it's no. occupied by um, Istra Law and Red Scale. Yeah, true. Well, they. No, uh, Viswal has have a few. 
occupations themselves. The Nor Norley being a blocker there really sucks for them, though. Mm. Um, but they are one of the ones with the most... I mean, they got second most um, war score. And with Istralor, other than Sel Maldor, like, really no one is getting anything from that war. Mm. Like, Istralor declared it, but they're not getting anything. They declared Speaking it over the Reclamation of, of Greenly. Small fellows did go Merc idea. To choice. Oh, 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 I know it. So Istralor is the Emperor of Anbana, and they declared ah. it to because Greenly is in the Empire. Got you. That's how they got into the war. What do they want out of it? Maybe just to help out everyone who's fighting. At some point, maybe they just like set all of the provinces to uh, all of the forts to no mothballed, and uh, they just peace out. Bloody Viacock is in this war. Yeah, but Istral is actually um, blocking a lot of the people fighting. Yeah. So Istral is going to take a lot of this halfling land. And halfling can't take it, Istral. They'll have to wait until Istral peace out. Yeah. Red scale is the same. There's a lot of red scale land, but uh, red scale. Oh, red scale's out. Red scale's out. Okay. That's a lot of land that's now been desieged. Yeah. The race what is on we... for the next uh, big group. How do they even get out of it? Uh, they got a couple of provinces. Yeah. On the coastline, uh, where Portnam used to be. Oh yes, I see down there. So definitely, we're not seeing a, um, a gnomish hierarchy in this in this game. Yeah. When was the last Anbanar update? That's a good question. I don't know that. Have they have their cobalt models always been marked small? Uh, yes. Look at them, they're tiny little boys. It make it makes sense. <laughs> that's how, that's how big they really are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it does make sense. I just never noticed it was so small. Anbana was last updated on the 13th of March, um, but this version that we're playing on isn't... Well, it is public if you are able to use the Bitbucket system. Um, yeah, I struggle with too. <laughs> uh, but it will be going live on Steam, from what I've heard, on the 20th of November. Yeah. It should be good. It should be indeed. been up to. Yeah, there's loads of new shit. Loads of new shit. Man, uh, I don't know if anyone works on the old clan who's in this dev clash, actually. I'd love to talk to them. Yeah, I mean, there's this going on for the whole of September, so I guess we should write down a list of names of people that we want to talk we to. want to talk to, yeah. yeah. Or, or <laughs> write, I want to talk about this topic Give me a list of people who I can uh, who I can chat with. Yeah, we're just gonna be talking about like, like goblins and my hunters. <laughs> two, yeah. We're just gonna switch between our two yeah. special interests in <laughs> rivers, imperialism, <laughs> yeah. elves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, well, it covers a lot of things because I fucking hate elves and you love them, so it's, yeah, we got a good variety here. Oh yeah, I mean, I. Wouldn't call myself a certified elf simp, um, but I do. I do elf, like. Elf lover. <laughs> I do like um, pointed ears. It's, it's just aesthetically, it works for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I like uh, my pointed ears on a, on a bastard. Elves are too pure and good, aren't they? That's the thing. Or... Oh, Nimscod have taken a province. Wait, Nimscod yeah. have returned to the map. As, yeah, a of, uh, as a vassal of, as a vassal of Red Scale, so he's released a vassal who has cores on one province of Portnam, and then himself. You know what I think it was is because you can get around. Oh no, hold on, I don't know why he did that. He's he's not getting any extra um, like free cores from that. It's because um, Portnam occupied it. So he had no other option but to fly, question mark, maybe? I don't know. 
So not allied before. Oh, anyway. Gawain's just been declared on by Rubyhold. Well, yeah, everyone wants a bit. He's of reclaiming what? his province. Oh. Let's go. Okay. Oh, but already the wait. No way. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. That that should be an easy enough war for him. Yeah. Thing this is, is a feast, this is a feasting frenzy on Gawain, isn't it? It's, yeah. Uh... It always tends to be like the the one who declares before the end of the feast, but like not first. Because the yeah. one that goes first doesn't get the biggest piece of pie. No, and they lose the most troops wise. Yes. You never want to be first, but you uh, you know, you don't want to be last either, because then there's nothing left. Yeah. It's like going to the supermarket, right? I mean, um, if you go last, you get all the reduced stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yellow sticker hour on Gowan. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> or New sure. Wanderers could probably uh, get a little bit hands over. Uh, I mean, they, they would have to do something because they've got no prospects where they are right now. No, not at all. Especially not being enemies with small fellows and Corintar. If I was in my shoes, I'd be looking at getting out of Escan. You're looking uh, at trying to find a friend. Yeah. They're allied only with the Order of Chroniclers, so Anben Cost. And oh, I don't see them help being helped by them. Mind you, they've, uh, they've expanded quite considerably. Yeah, they've got the entire island. But they don't have it. <laughs> but they don't have the Knoll Island of uh, Adrael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have there any other two. interesting developments in other continents? Uh, in Bulwar, the Harpies got wrecked, and Sarenvar has actually started going into the Harpy Hills. Yeah. Um, how close are these guys to being able to click the Phoenix Empire button? First Artenches is, is halfway there. They have 49 out of 100. And Saryand is at 58 out of 100. Yeah. So neither are close enough yet. Um, neither of them are going to be easy. The uh, Halflings on Halfling Island have almost managed to unite the Summer Isles. They just need like six more provinces, seven more provinces, something like that. And they'll be able to do that. They also need to accept cultures. That's a new requirement. I don't think I've ever seen that before. No. The requirement to accept cultures to be able to form a tag. I like it. Yeah, but yeah, at the same cool. time, he's only got two promoted culture slots and he needs to accept four. Uh, so that's interesting. Well, he just has to take a uh, humanist idea. There, right? Sure. Which I think is... Have they renamed humanist ideas? I assume they have. Uh, Tolerance? Yeah, they renamed it to Tolerance. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit weird if you're playing as a non Um. Mm, you need to be Tech 7 as well. They've got all the provinces they need. Um. Apparently, Elephant is the one that co developed all clan. But maybe we could uh, oh, put him nice. on the list to interview next week. Good, good, good. He could become, yeah, he could become an empire, but becoming an empire costs, uh, well, you need a thousand development. And at the moment he has 419. So hmm. if he devs every single one of his provinces to double what it is now, sure. Yeah, yeah. Not sure that's happening, though. So, who else have we got? Korintar's doing well. Marhold is being murdered by Raven Banner. Uh, Biantang's just looking real strong in the north there. Uh, is it? Is it a secondary participant? Yeah, Star Wars bands are actually going. Rekaprun's doing really well. They've uh, united most of the land they need. They just need to march north now and uh, take on the winter... Uh, clans. Ooh. Frozen was about to start butting heads with Corantar. They're marching into Escan. No players in South Island here, other than Kamarka. By the way, this teleporting thing that we were looking at before, apparently they t have to teleport to all of the different holy sites in yeah. uh, South Island here, which is like, pretty yeah, cool. Bonus when they do it. We're basically doing a little pilgrimage, which is nice. 
who on the team have we talked to uh, today? We spoke with Thorfindel, we spoke with Biegeltorin, we spoke with Hoya. That's was there? Three. Was it just three? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we we did a we did our due diligence. Mm. You'll be doing more next week. And this is the final year. We're ending in January. Uh, I'd be worrying if I was on both of of the cans that now. Um, it's not looking too great. Yeah. That's Shadow. Uh, Dreamer? Where are they getting their force of it from? Let's have a look here. Yeah. There must be some sort Shadow of Shadow Dreamer. Um, let's have a look. What is their force limit? Uh, f well, that's pretty high for the amount of provinces mm. they have. Yeah. Um, they got the reformed Dwarvar Warband. Dwarvar Claimer is giving them 20. Uh, Go so away. it's. Yeah. That's that's kind of huge already. So yeah, they're. Uh, I mean, the fact that they they can have that positive income over force limit. I suppose orcs aren't the most expensive troops in the world, but uh, yeah, they're doing really well. Yeah, and they'll lose for warband. I assume they're gonna. Yeah. Merge into something else. So, yeah, this is the, the final year of the game, um, of this, sorry, of this session. There will be another session next week. Um, hopefully, Father Loris, you'll be able to join me then as well. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed. Um, and, I'll, and I'll ask even more uh, weird questions about Yeah, units. and, you know, spread the, the truth of imperialism. We have to, yeah. actually, no, I have to, it is a joke. I do a lot of editing. <laughs> this is a joke. Um, but yeah, I will be putting the VOD for this um, just wholly up on uh, YouTube, on my uh, main channel. Um, but I also think I might put out the um, interviews and put them up separately as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would work. Will there be more clashes as well? I would assume so. Like, everyone's kind of in that consolidation phase at the moment, but um, as soon as people have nowhere to expand then other players, they will expand into other players, so there will can, be more clashing in the we, dev clash. We are seeing some, like, heads already beginning to put up against each other. Frozen more Corantar, there's a war brewing there. Look at that well, Fro is Frozen more a player? No. Oh! They're just really just good. Awesome. They're just, they're always just a pain in the ass for yeah. living next to them. <laughs> um, they're like a Gower uh, that starts small. Kavuria and a Raven Banner will be butting up against everyone in Escan. Yeah. Um, and Kavuria is allied with Corantar as well, so that is uh, something there. Yeah. I mean, everyone will want to get rid of the pirates in... The yeah. Time. The colonization say. phase has started as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Pearl's Edge has gone there. Moonhaven, they're both sharing an island right now. Um, so, I mean, the New World... The thing is about colonizing and multiplayer when there's New World nations. The New World's at a distinct advantage. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see a battle between Aodad and Yin, for sure. Oh, yeah. Unless they're on the same team, but I don't know if that's true. Not quite sure. Just sure um, in the Halesi area, Bianfang is probably going to be fighting um, against the south again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be a thing. Uh, I think we're... Are we going to be hitting the end of the year, or is it going to end now? Ah, okay, sure. no, we're just we're just going to be ending here, is it? Oh no, we unpaused. No, looks like we're carrying. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, I'm one minute late to another multiplayer that's starting right now, but this is fine, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's alright. But we're kind of just in a wind down phase anyway, um, so yeah, yeah. it's all it's all good. Right. I'll say thank you all very much for uh, coming out to watch. Again, this will be. Um, going on next week as well so if you're not followed uh click the follow button if you want to stick around um i'm going to start a, a lord of the rings eu4 lobby in a moment which should be fun so uh is this the first session or the it will be session? the first session yeah i'm playing first as rohan session. 
Oh, cool. Uh, so you got to have OP cavalry. I That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thanks all for watching. And Fadaloris, thank you very much for uh, co-casting with me. It's a pleasure. Fingers crossed I'm free next week. Uh, yeah. Because it's fun. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, until then, uh, toodaloo. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, bye-bye.